Yeah. Hello. Hello. Can y'all hear me okay? It sounds great. It sounds great. I'm about to get us started. Here we go. <clears throat> Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Black Guy Who Tells podcast. I'm your host, Rod, joined as always by my co-host, Karen. And we're live on a Sunday morning, ready to do some podcasting. And we're not alone. Mm-hmm. We have a, a friend, mm-hmm. uh, an actress of the of the of the stage, of the theater, of the theater, <laughs> a co-host <laughs> of one of our favorite podcasts. Yes. What's the tea? It's our girl Nicole. What's up, Nick Jew? Good morning. Hello. Mm-hmm. Great. Uh, how you hey. doing? I'm. You know, all things considered, mm. <laughs> doing all mm-hmm. right. <laughs> Now that now that I'm an adult and um I know my mom used to listen to NPR in the car all the time and one of the shows is All Things Considered. Now I understand. Yes, you know? I get it. All Things Considered. You gotta you gotta put it all in perspective, or else it doesn't count. Yes, yeah. and as as a kid, when you used to hear adults talk about and like I said, as a kid, you didn't understand this. As adults, my mom and them, they're really old school. They was like, I'm just glad I woke up and everything okay and I'm in my right mind. And, you, and as an adult, you go, oh, I think I know what that means now. Because yeah. the life be life and sometimes. Yeah. And some people don't respond well and they snap. Yeah. <laughs> and reality. I, yeah, listen. And I've been exercising my privilege to look away. And I do acknowledge that it is a privilege to be able to look away. But my own mental health is so fragile <laughs> that I can't really hold much else right now. So in the in my world, the things that I can control, I, I'm I'm doing all right. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. And also, I realize that I tell people, I say you can't care about everything, and right. people don't want to hear that, particularly online where everything is the most important thing ever, and they don't do a scale from one to ten. Everything is a ten, or everything mm-hmm. is a zero, and it like the life don't function like that. Most things in life is gray, and sometimes you have to opt out, and opting out isn't uh, always a bad thing. It doesn't mean you don't care, but like that, right. it just right. means that you're not going to pour all the energy and effort to being on the front line because every fight isn't your fight to fight. Well, I think also uh, what people consider being on the front line, what we measure as concern and caring, it's so wrapped up in like performance. It's it's yes. almost it's almost like yes. another job for people to be like, yes. I need to be seen supporting this thing. I need to, I need you to hear what I'm saying. And then I think the you know on the cynical level is because so much of it's happening on social media, and so much of it is about like people following or not following, retweeting, not retweeting, liking, not liking. A lot of stuff can get lost in that because you need to say more bombastic things to to get more agreement or more interaction. And so I think by the time these discussions hit social media, you give it a day or two, it's so not even a day these days, you give it a, a couple of hours, it's so out of pocket that you really can't quote unquote care about everything because the way we're measuring care is not, it's not like, like to me, Caring about somebody is being like, oh, let me check on my friend. Let me text this Mm -hmm. person. It's not, Mm -hmm. I'm not like, if some, like, if one of my friends has something happen to him, I'm not on Twitter being like, oh my God, Justin is sick, everybody. What the fuck are we going to do? Why aren't y'all retweeting me? How is he going to be better? Like, that's how Twitter feels like that. And I don't think that's real. No, it's, it's not. And it's also one of those things where it's funny quote unquote, how the left claims that the right is like that, but the left is like that too with these extremes with them having to overtop each other and yeah. or, and, or, I mean, and it's the, to be seen. That's the platform, right? I think it's just yeah, everything gears its way towards that, you know, it's mm-hmm. um, it, I think it can be fun when it's like silly shit, yes. like sugar grits or Arby's or something. It can yes. be, yeah, some of the best days on Twitter is, is just everybody About getting more nothing. and more ridiculous over the top, but then like Motherfuckers be doing this with real life shit. And you be like, yeah. hey, 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 you you might want to take this offline. Hey, like, you really hey. want to you want to go viral that bad, huh? Okay, hey, all right. Hey, you might want to talk to a professional. Nobody on this platform is going to be able to help you, even professionals. You wow, need to go we, talk to somebody. We just jumped right into the banter segment. I was trying to uh, say <laughs> this, is, this is the Blackout Tips podcast, and you can find us everywhere you get podcasts. The official weapon of the show is the photo chair, the unofficial sport. 
bullet ball, but this is like a phone call. You know okay. we don't need and you. bullet ball street. <laughs> <laughs> but this so to me like the best part about the banter is like y'all made it a segment instead of just like bantering you're like now we are setting aside, aside time to banter we, <laughs> we let the people that. know <laughs> this is time we talk about nonsensical things okay we're very transparent <laughs> podcast here we're very open we ain't trying to hide from y'all <laughs> also like we monetize the banter so like Karen just wants to jump right into the banter, but I have to play the commercial music <laughs> so we can get paid. I'm sorry. I gotta fuck up the money. Yeah. So here's, here's like 15 seconds of commercial music. Your brothers, that one is actually, I know that's not Rodney's. That I think is infrared crypto. That's, I, we got some talented people, we do. I have a grievance too. Like, I understand no, that y'all have a huge audience, and maybe mm-hmm. the people who make the beats and the little songs and shit don't listen to our show. But mm-hmm. I'm tired of listening to everybody. Oh, it's the most dope show, it's about that. Time. Like, everybody got a little mm-hmm. thing. Uh, yes. working. Where are submissions? Why y'all not submitting to what's the? Team? I know we only come on every six weeks, but damn, we can't get no, <laughs> you can't get no theme music. Yeah, y'all got a call. Y'all, y'all, y'all know y'all beat makers out there. Y'all got a call. Yeah, what's gotta... the email address? Nick Juice, so they can email. It's gooddaysaints at gmail dot com. Yeah. Hit us up. Make you also. I listen to your show. You gotta say it on the show. You gotta be like, we need some beats. We need, we need some, some beats. Yeah, I just feel like y'all be manifesting beats. Like y'all will have a segment, and the next week somebody's in y'all inbox, like here goes some music for it. Yeah, we had to train the audience though. Right, like, it was a time where we was like, That's man, true. it would be nice That's if we true. had some That's little true. music. And uh, listen, you never know how talented the people listening right. are. Right. So many talented people in the world, and you don't know who listening to what. You know what I'm right. saying? Like every once in a while, we still get like a listener or two that pops up and like tag us on something. I'm like, nigga, you play That's music dope. for Beyonce. What yeah, the <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like I was about to, so they were about to drive me to a creative space. I was about to diamond styles on y'all and see if mm. I could get in the in the stew in the okay. lab and throw something down. Listen, I mean, you you is a professional, <laughs> right? Listen, right. Fucking Marsha's plate is is the music it's is a banging. new day, brand new day. Come on, <laughs> oh, oh yes, child. You you fuck around to get a whole that whole last the way to song. Over again. Yes. 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 Come on, yes. Diamond. With that Come good on. word. We got some really talented people that shout out to Fell Five for my theme music, but lips yes. make feel that motherfucking that motherfucker is a banger. Every time I hear that, I'll be like, hey. If your lips ain't smacking, it ain't good. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, Nicole, what you been up to, man? I mean, it's time for banter time. So, like, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. You can, uh, you, yeah. I can put you on the spot, but you can bring up anything you feel like talking yeah, about anything uh so what, what you want to banter about so you know i'm a city girl uh been a city girl since like 2016 so i try not to drive a lot unless i'm going to work or whatever so i do my errands like a city girl i walk to the grocery store whatever whatever yeah. but um the inflation has been inflating and the amount of money i used to spend at the grocery store has like doubled for getting the same items so yes. i was like you know what let me act like i know get in my car that i still own and drive to the suburbs to get the groceries y'all i finally have gone to the aldi yeah come on through aldi yes baby. Aldi. Yeah, some Ald- aldi's will change baby. your life baby let me tell you and when i go i just go with vibes i don't even have a list no, like I'm, I'm, list. I'm gonna let aldi tell me what i need Mm-hmm. For the day, yes. And every time, I, they have not done me wrong yet. The only thing, my only little note, mm-hmm. um, sometimes I just need like an onion, like mm-hmm. two potatoes. And there are certain items that you can get single, but there's yeah. other ones that you could only get in a big ass bag. So like yeah. Mr. Aldi, if you listening, <laughs> I just need one onion, <laughs> just one yes. onion. I really think we need a grocery store that is designed for single and childless yes. people only. Yes. Um, 
I mean, the families, we get it. Y'all need the deals. Y'all got the Costco. Y'all right. like they got y'all on lock. They look out for y'all. Yo, y'all, yes. yes. You go to Costco, buy twenty seven frozen pieces for three dollars or whatever. That's that's dope, and I love that. Yes. For right. But I actually wouldn't mind paying like a little bit more per item. Yeah. But I can get just one item. Like, why can't I get a celery stick? Right. Yes. Right. Why? Right. Why can't I get a half a loaf of bread? I don't need a whole loaf. Give me a half a loaf of bread. I don't need all and four know, five and slices. A, Give me six. So there's and I'm a, good. There's places that do have the half a loaf of bread at the right. bakery. Publix has it. Fresh Market has it. But like I said, more of that for the for yes. everything. Right. I don't need a bag of tomatoes, dog. Right. I, I need, need three one. of them. I just need yeah. three. And I'm not gonna use the milk in time. Come yes. on, smaller milk. Please. Can I can I get a Please. fourth a fourth of a gallon of milk? <laughs> I'm making. Like, I want to make guacamole tonight. Right. I don't want to make guacamole for three weeks. You I can't like anyway. Tonight. Your avocado gonna give up the ghost by the time you get to the <laughs> checkout. True. That is true. I do like the um. I do like the uh the grocery stores that have the avocados that are like ready to go mm-hmm. already. Mm-hmm. Shout out to mm-hmm. them. Cause man, mm-hmm. I'll be fucking avocado timing up. Like if it's like. If I get like the hard joint where you gotta let it sit for for a little bit, Child, it, it it expire at three a.m. while you sleeping. By the time you wake up at seven, it be like nope, I I'm no good no Listen, more. Listen, I got a I got a hack. You know, I be on TikTok. I'm a TikTok auntie. Uh, I've learned so many wonderful things from TikTok. But one of the most useful is is if you put a perfectly ripe avocado, submerge it in water and cover it and put it in the refrigerator, it will stay perfectly ripe for the duration of the time you have it in that water. I tested it. Six weeks. I pulled out my avocado six weeks later, and that motherfucker was beautiful. I don't know the science behind it. I don't know why it works, but it It don't matter. It works. Yeah. I love a hack. I saw yesterday, and I'm sure a lot of people know this one, but I I didn't know it. It was, uh, if you take a a raw onion that you just cut up and you put it in some ice water, it'll take all the bitter taste out and some of the odor. That's new to me. Yeah. I ain't know. You know? Uh, yeah, I heard you. You know, boy, been chopping them crying. <laughs> right. A lot of people say rinse your onions underneath water. I seen that, but prior to chopping, they said it'll reduce that spritz that causes mm. you to cry. Okay. Well, um, a, a chef too on there who this black guy who I'm like in love with. I can't remember his name right now, but he does the one take videos, um, and he broke down the different uses of different onions so if you want this taste you use the purple the yellow the white and i was just like i should be grabbing onions and now i'm like wait. they all the same apparently they not right right like wait wait mm-hmm. i love me a purple onion dog i love oh. me the purple onions mm-hmm. um i think they go good on sandwiches too mm-hmm. um but uh that motherfucking sweet yellow man it don't miss like it, don't. it just you just need to know what to put it in but it don't miss I am a white. I do prefer white onions. Wow. Okay, John. Onions. Okay. onions. Onions. You got a John Mayer tongue over yes. there. Yes. Yes. You know what they say about the white onions? They think. Hey, he apologized for that, David. He did. He did. <laughs> I know. Look, I know John Mayer is your Taylor Swift. I get yes. it. I get yes, it. we with yeah, you. you. Listen, we go white boys. We go. That's okay. it. That's he's my he's my Tay Tay. Like I, yeah. I don't I don't raise a lot of banners for right. people of privilege, but. Y'all not gonna keep talking about my guy. He he yeah. apologized. He apologized. Not <laughs> yeah, not too not too much on my toxic king. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that was peak. That was peak. Uh, peak peak. Like early internet was everybody mm-hmm. popping out on social media at the same time. Mm-hmm. He and might have been one of the first ones that got like the universal like black people trying to cancel him. He might be yeah. the first. And the best thing is that people keep finding out because the internet is forever so like right. every five years or so he, his uh quote that he said about Nicki Minaj will come out and then mm-hmm. somebody will bring up the David Duke dick thing and I know he's like I'm friends with Dave Chappelle leave me alone right. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> what is wrong with you people man I like it is it is at once like a, an unending um entertainment is watching the internet re try to recancel and retread, but also it's extremely like it it's proof of why to, how toxic social media is that y'all yeah. want to recancel people. Like, yeah, you were mad at them already. What are we yeah. why are we remadding? <laughs> yeah. Like, not like a new thing happened. It's just like 
the same thing. Remember the time? Like, <laughs> yeah. Like also, you know, that's what he get, though. That's what he get. Yeah. Like, I'm whatever. I'm not, I'm not protecting him too hard. He said that shit on wax. So, yeah. It's more of a, it's not even about protecting it. It's about protecting my mental health because I'll be like, I can't be mad. Right. randomly every day like y'all y'all got be it. mad every like, every day dog it's that happened in 2007 i was right. i did my mad bid okay i'm yeah. out i'm free now <laughs> well and also like what happened to the merit of changed behavior like i, I, yes. thought, I thought that's the the thing that everybody Whoa, says apology is a, is a change behavior so like if he did that thing and continuously did things right. just like that thing then yeah let's get his ass but like he did that thing his whole band was like, fuck you, John Mayer. And for right. the next eight months while he was on tour, every night he had to apologize in front of all them black people standing behind him because of that stupid mm -hmm. shit he said. And he didn't do it again. And like, <laughs> you know, I don't know if he's been like outspoken for civil rights or some shit like that. I don't yeah. pay attention to well, let's not, let's not ask like him too much. That's not yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's another thing. That's another internet thing too that I don't believe in. It. It's mm -hmm. just like, you fucked up. Now go be a spokesperson. No, mm -hmm. you fucked up. Mm -hmm. Apologize and now shut the fuck up. You yeah, don't need go money. learn something. <laughs> yeah, right. right. Y'all, y'all asking for too much. Oh, and uh, since we was talking about hacks, another hack that I uh, was watching a uh, TikTok. If you got uh, little boys and they learn how to pee, and y'all know they pee all over the toilet, and your toilet consistently smell like pee, and you want to get the pee odor away, you know how at the bottom of and the base of the. Uh, Toilet and particularly on the floor is where a lot of it kind of soaks. Take shaving cream, regular ass shake them up shaving cream and spray around it and scrub. And there's something in the shaving cream that actually um uh, is designed like to patty the odor. urine. Yeah, that, 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 that repels the odor. So parents out there, if you tired, particularly a woman, y'all know we piss inside of it. If you tired of, of, of sitting down and smelling pee, use that hack. All right. Um, Karen, any more banter for you? Oh, hold on. Let me let me grab my phone. Hold on. Oh, I didn't oh, mean to surprise yes. you. Yes, yeah, I mean got to you with the I, that's right. I, I had to. I, I got had to pull out the notes on this because, child, I be forgetting. Nah, I love notes. It. I love a note. Yeah. I be forgetting. Oh, me and Roger went to the Hornets game, and so we about to have a horn, a horn, a Karen Hornets hour. So shout out to the people that you know that missed that. And Roger was in New York. I would do my my Hornets hour. So we went to the Hornets games and we've been having a ball. We've been having a great time uh going to the Hornets game challenge and, and challenge. Y'all know me. I um been wanting Hornets season tickets. We got half season tickets, but I don't care. They season tickets in my book. I've been wanting Hornets season tickets since I was a kid. I've I I've been a real G since 1988. I was motherfucking nine years old. And we used to go to the Hornets game and had to pay the five dollars for the cheap seats up high. And I was like one day I'm gonna get my ass in some good seats. I'm an adult. I say my coins. And so I got my ass in some good seats. And so child, we walked up there and the lady was like, season tickets. I was like, yes, bitch. You don't know how good that feel. But I, like, yes, I ain't got to go over there in the poor folks line. I can go through the season ticket line with everybody else. So <laughs> we go through the season ticket lines and go up there. And I've been having myself a great time uh, at the game. And um, I like our seats uh, now. We kind of got a got tidbit upgrade. So I like our seats. It's more comfortable and shit like that. And uh, I got a complaint uh, about the refs. I, you know, NBA don't pay me or nothing like that. So I'm a, I'm a complaint about the refs. We went to the game on motherfucking Friday night, and them refs was all over the motherfucking place. For those people that seen the game live, I was highly upset. Them refs was like, uh, we going to not call it rough, and then we going to call it rough. And what Nights end up, people can start getting technical fouls and shit. I was like, the fuck is this? The ref lost control of the game, and I was not happy at all. We actually had a probability where we put like this. If we lose and, and the game is ref well, we just lost the game. Don't get me wrong. But if we lose over some ticky-tack fouls, because the thing is, both of our centers had like five fouls. Make it make sense, dog. Make it make sense. All right. Uh, I agree. I was at the game, too, and I thought the refs were wilding. Uh, also, Isaiah Stewart that plays for Detroit Lions, uh, Detroit Pistons, um, he kind of reminded me of Big Groove. Like, he kind of looked like him. Mm -hmm. um, like, he ain't he strong as fuck? Ain't he strong? <laughs> he was moving our little nigga. He was moving our centers around. He was like, move, little nigga. I'm, I got this rebound. And it, it's one thing for him to be moving them around. It's another thing for them to be calling the fouls on our little dude. Like, yes! I'm like, how, how that work? Like, 
Like, like either they more physical than us and they beating us on the boards or y'all calling ticky tack fouls. You can't do, have both. Yeah. <laughs> this shit was so frustrating. We was at the game and I know for the people to see the camera, you would see like, if you was like watching on TV, you would see like mellow ball or somebody just fly off the fucking screen, you know, out of the sky <laughs> and, you, and hit the ground and he'd be like, fine. They'd be like, we ain't calling shit. <laughs> I'm like, the fuck is this? Yeah. Like, it was very frustrating watching that game. I'm so like, I was listening to Karen talk about how happy she is for the NBA to be back because it's like the highlight of winter, and I'm like, oh my god, the NBA is back. I, I I'm having a time with my sports teams. My fucking baseball team is terrible, and leaving Oakland, the Warriors. I don't know. Like we gave up White Dante. Uh, we let Jordan Poole go. I was just like, oh, mm, I don't know. I don't know. I hate Chris Paul. I believe that God hates Chris Paul. I believe that he will not allow Chris Paul to have anything good, specifically the fucking Larry. So I didn't want him. Like, now we got two nut punch dudes. Like, I don't I don't approve of him as a, a staff, a record label, and a crew. Whatever. Y'all are accumulating a roster of just <laughs> people that make me be like, until you do right by me. Right. No! Everything you even think about, go figure. Right. We, we don't need that. We don't need that smoke. Not around I, God's I, chosen Steph Curry. Not around, I'm like, not around like God's chosen. Like basketball God. Jesus. What are y'all right. doing? What y'all doing? <laughs> so I have very little faith in the team. I don't think we gonna make a splash in the play-in tournament, let yeah. alone the playoff tournament. But, but... They trying to get me because I'm like, wait, Steph can take a rest and we don't go down by 18. Mm -hmm. hmm. Something yeah. to this. Uh, they, they know how to how to pull your string hard and be like, come on, Nick, you. Yes, Chad, you know, I, this is our season. I think the issue for me is that um, I think Bob Myers, the former GM of the team, I'm pretty sure he left because he didn't want to have to break apart what he built. Yeah, because because he knew everyone on the everyone that likes basketball know the right answer is like these niggas got to go step step. Yeah, yep. <laughs> yes, get, get rid of Clay Thompson. Yeah, like it's just it's ugly, but this is how you yeah, keep the is, franchise going. Yeah, and don't right. I know he didn't want to sit in that office and tell them, "Hey, Draymond, we not giving you no new deal, bro. I, right. I don't know what the hell you thinking." And yes, right. Jordan Poole was staying. You, you, you the problem. I. He right. was just fine till you punched him in the face. Right. You punched him. Right. And people what try to fuck. I'm trying to tell you if if you punch me in my face at work, it's gonna at be a work? problem every, every goddamn day. I see, I see you. you, bitch. You gonna get the eyes like bitch. One of us got to go. Me or you eventually is gonna be on site, nigga. Also, it, the th yeah, the, mm -mm. the thing that's mm -mm. weird about that too is like. You put the fan base in a weird position because a lot of fan, like you know, it's your team. You feel like a we we gotta say something on this guy. So now it's like you defending the ball punching, right? Dude, or you gotta be like, fuck, I don't like him either. I mean, right? Uh, you know, because he because Draymond won't even allow himself to be apologetic. Like when he when it first happened, I remember he put out that documentary that was like six minutes long. <laughs> Sometimes, that was basically like sometimes you got to hit a nigga, but you know, right, I mean, right, right. You know, sorry to his folks, but you know, and and then it just got more and more contentious going on. So it does feel like one thing is gonna happen, and then that whole team is gonna like implode because I yeah. don't think Chris Paul's a good person in the teammate. I don't think Draymond's a good person in a teammate when it comes to like accountability. And I feel like them two old niggas and, and Clay to a lesser extent, which Clay is in denial. If you seen his quotes in his interviews, he'd be like, "Best shape of my life. I'm finna average the most points ever." I'm like, "Nigga, you are 33 with two no, with no knees. You no can't knees. Do you don't have, you don't even have one knee, dog." But you know, right. the thing about Clay Thompson is, I think that like all of that fuels him in an interesting way because he will have. You know, a bunch of people calling him terrible and da, 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 and then he'll go on a run, a ridiculous run. But like the same problem we've always I'm sorry, this is not balls deep. But, oh, uh, yeah, this the same problem we always have in the postseason is that Clay and Steph do not get hot on the same night. And, it, right. and that Splash Brothers shit ended after like the first, after like 2015. Yep. It, they were splashing brothers during the regular season and then in playoffs, right. like Steph Ankle still in the locker room and Clay going yep. off and Steph go up for fucking 51 and Clay 
doing Harrison Barnes yeah. numbers when he was with us. Harrison yeah. fucking Barnes had the nerve to score like 30 points in the quarter mm-hmm. the other night. I saw it. He was balling too. I said, yeah. Yeah. Everybody, everything old is new again, okay? Y- yes, it is. And uh, somebody uh, made a joke in the chat about my Chick-fil-A uh, parachute update. <laughs> yes, child. That, that is a parachute that been up on the speaker for three years. And me and Roger, I think we was at the game and it fell on there. And every time I go to the game, I've been looking. And I was like, you know what? I I, I, got, I got to do an RIP because I guarantee you that the, the Chick-fil-A coupon don't expire by now. And, and I guess some people was like, you know what? It's too far out. We can't reach it. Mm-mm. It yeah. just ain't coming down. Oh man. Um, as far as my banter, um, I just gotta say, you know, rest in peace to Matthew Perry. Yeah, he died yesterday in the pool. Um that's so sad. Yeah, but I can't even I, like a lot of people are saying a lot of things, and I don't I know that he had like a long history with addiction or whatever, but it's like, damn, he can't even die, and people are like Hey. arguing yeah. on social media about different things. <laughs> Sorry, so I didn't mean to it. fuck up your joke, Rod. Right? It's, Sorry, all, it's all good. I do miss um I do miss when we had lovably problematic people and it, and they didn't have to be like of your affinity group for you to respect it. Like right. mm-hmm. it used to be a time where you'd be like, yeah, that dude's a crackhead, but like so we just not getting too mad at him. Like he going to have some antics today, but he going to have some antics tomorrow, so we just not too much on on this and like he wrote a book or something and in the book he said like a thing about how uh river phoenix died but he was like keanu reeves should die and then it was like he apologized right Right. i love keanu he was like and basically his excuse was like man i'll be on drugs right Like I, I'm not a happy person. I'll be fucking up. I'm sorry. And and people mostly kind of let it go because right. that's his reputation. But I think there's a silver lining to this, and that is all the black people that watch Friends finally got a moment to not be ashamed yesterday. Right. And it felt good, man. I'm like, like I'm not even joking. I felt mm-hmm. good for them. I was like, y'all can live y'all truth because w- the way Twitter has black Twitter has re like purposed all that history right. into like. Black people hate friends, don't know any of the actors from it. None of us ever watched it. Living single to real friends. Right. They stole it. We all knew at the time. We was like, it's like a very like retconning of history. Where I'm like, yeah. I'm pretty sure Friends was the biggest show it, on, on Earth. Earth at one it point. was. Yeah. It, it was getting paid. Mi- every, everyone right. that was getting paid millions of dollars. To the per point episode. where I remember black people being upset there weren't enough black people on the show. Like, right. And then they had watched, Aisha Tyler. Right. <laughs> like, we're watching it. Where the fuck are the blacks? And like, so it's, I said, good for y'all. I saw, and people were quote tweeting that going like, yes, thank you. You finally see me. I, I Yes, I love friends. And I'm, rest in peace. I'm gonna miss him. I miss the show, all this stuff. And I was like, good for y'all because these white people ain't famous for just nothing. So right. good, good for y'all black. It, it put like this. Even if you didn't watch the show, if you were of that era and of that time, they were everywhere. So you everywhere. knew their faces and you knew that they were on the show. And that's why I was like, oh, because, you know, I hate when shows that I love that, you know, being younger and as a kid, you know, the people uh, are no longer with us. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I was, uh, I know I fit the description, but I, I didn't watch Friends on purpose, but you can't avoid it. The nail shop I used to go to would play it just on loop and like a really good friend of mine at the time. They, so like, I know all the characters and the plot points or whatever. Um, but I've never like sat down and been like, I'm going to watch Friends. Same thing with, uh, Seinfeld. Like I've seen things and cause my dog was named seven and everybody was like, Oh, Seinfeld. I'm like, no idea. So I had to learn what that was. Uh, but it's so funny to to me. I'm like, oh, Matthew Perry, he's from Fools Rush In, and da, 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 da. but like the whole wide world knows this man from France. I just right. I don't know his work as as Chandler. I should. And say. here's the thing: I didn't really watch Friends. I didn't yeah. really watch it. I don't. I don't know if I've ever watched a full episode of Friends. But I recognize the cultural touchstone that it me was. Too. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, and so you know me, man. I'm not th- I'm not a contrarian, but I'm just fiercely trying to hold on to reality. So I'm like, right. when black people was on some like nobody watched, I'm like, okay, that, that can't be true. All right, this wasn't the number <laughs> yeah. one show in the country for have, years. Have for y'all no have y'all on Twitter representing you know blacks for whatever grew up in white spaces? So I know y'all watched it. <laughs> right, blacks for whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no, y'all know the type. Y'all know. Yep. The type. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. I'm, I speak for all the blacks in this section. It's like because you don't, 
no no other blacks so that you thought <laughs> i'll speak for us all that you yeah. met the other ones it was like oh no these niggas don't like me um <laughs> quick question for white people this is something i was thinking about listening to some white music how much is a midnight train ticket from south detroit to anywhere you know <laughs> Like, that's a good question. I don't know. It didn't sound Does the train like, even run at midnight. It didn't sound like these white people were doing the best in this song. So, like, how they even afford that shit? Um, I was in, I was in the only white people write in for the answer to that. I know we don't know. Um, they, I was in the when we were at the Hornets game, they did have a moment where they had. Like they do this section where like they watch kids dance and the kids mm-hmm. ki- dancing is different now. So the kids do TikTok dances. Yes, they mm-hmm. do. Anyway. Which, TikTok dances are great for arenas though because you stay in one place in your seat. You don't. Yes, you, you know it's not a lot of movement. You know they couldn't have did that when we was in the eighties and yeah, shit. Yeah, somebody, somebody would have like, lost the shin. Yeah, the kids are dancing. <laughs> Motherfuckers been doing a typewriter. The yeah, like, yeah <laughs> people could have been going down left and right. That kid and play thing where you jump over your leg, like it, it wouldn't have worked because dancing has changed. But mm-hmm. they were doing the TikTok dance segment, and last year they used to do it to um that. I just want to. Yes. I just, mm-hmm. I, 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 by the way, if you haven't seen that and felt that in the arena, that's when you understand the song. Like, yeah. Like, I know a lot of people was like, I don't get it. What's so good? You got to be in the arena and watch everybody get yeah. hyped. And it's, and it's super loud, too. And, and and it was the thing. I'm old, so I didn't know it was a TikTok dance. Because when it first happened, I could say, why the fuck is all these kids jumping up? And why is they slamming well, their thighs? They don't say TikTok dance. They just say it's a like, you know, like, we got the dance cam. But... The kids now they all do the fucking flaws. Yeah, and that are, and they call one of them like the Fortnite dance or yeah. something like that. I was like, oh. So here's the thing, though, guys. I'm not proud of this, but I had a moment, a little bit, a little respectability moment inside myself. Oh shit. Uh oh. The kids was dancing the ski ye. They were. Did you jump on the side of the maga? Did you maga out <laughs> real quick? I had, a, I had a moment. I was like. <gasps> <laughs> It was a kids' bop version. I was like, I don't think I heard this. Ver- what? what well, is I don't think it. No, it wasn't the kids' bop version. It was oh. the regular version, but they just blank out the cuss words. Oh, which okay, is that's why I was like, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, bop. even with the cuss words blanked out of ski, it's pretty. It's, it, it's yeah. out there. Yeah, I was like, wait a minute, what is happening? So I just, I just noticed, like, I, I had a little Republican moment of like, oh, oh what? no, did you society? What is happening to our society right now? What that is the happening children to the kids? Are dancing the to the CE. The same you thing wanna... happened to me like twice this week. I was on a college campus, and the way some of the young people was dressed going to class, I had, to, I had to be like, no, 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 you're just old. You're just yep. old. Yeah, you have uh, to remind yourself you're old, right? I used to wear pajama pants and shit to class too, but some of the, yes, the, young, the young people are wearing like. Underwear, and I'm like, yeah, we. I think we. Yeah, did that. That. we did that. We did that too. Did that too. Um, <laughs> like, I just. But for the the first minute, I was like, <gasps> like, oh right. no. <laughs> I, had to, I had to catch myself. I had to right. remember my values. You go, oh right. no, yeah, yeah. We, uh, they're not going to work in a corporate environment yeah. like like they. This is their free time. So okay, I get it. It was just they a way to be here. <laughs> they they right. To come right. Here. So what would you want? All that motherfucking tuition mm-hmm. pay? What you want? <laughs> it was. What you want? It was just a brief republic moment that's all yes. it was just like yes. a brief like it, did, it passed real fast but it was like a like it was like i was like man what's up those songs yeah. i know this song it was, it was scary. i was like oh <laughs> oh wait oh. this is a an amazing sketch brief republican moments yeah. you're like <laughs> walking down the street and a group of young black kids is around you and you like grab your purse Thanks you're so. like <laughs> I've had them. <laughs> you all, you all <laughs> had them. You catch yourself. People are like, oh, oh, oh what's wrong with me? Oh, this is getting old. Oh, my bad. Oh, I'm so sorry. Like, especially like, I understand. Most of us are coming from a lifetime of conditioning of <laughs> yeah. bullshit, whether it be right. like religion, conservatives, uh-huh. or being in mm-hmm. the South. Like, you just had these moments where you'd be like, oh, shit. Yeah, like, you know, um, uh, like and, it, and it's stuff you agree with like it's not even stuff it's like i'm not who is this person that jumped out of me for a sec get back in there what the fuck <laughs> like i like i'm uh, i'm a little gay uh, whatever i've always been a little gay i'm just openly admitting it now and i had a brief republican moment in the kitchen where i was like what if you fall in love like all this well, stuff yeah. that i believe <laughs> yes. everything that i believe all yes. the things that i have done right i thought 
for, for a, a second. millisecond. Like, <gasps> it jumped out. <laughs> in a brief Republican moment. Yeah. Right. I was like, shut up. You just look in the mirror and it's you, but you got on glasses and a bow tie. <laughs> like, and your, haircut, your hair is all fucked my up. My hair fucked up. My ends yeah. need a trim real bad. Like, oh, 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 look. oh no. What, what happened? Look like you ain't greased your hair in days. You're like, oh no. Right. <laughs> like I was, I was playing, I was watching an anime about um it's it's on netflix and it's based off a video game or whatever it's called something falcon like cyber falcon or laser falcon or some shit like that whatever um but the main character is gay and not just gay but like it's a very like sexy show it's not like it's the thing that we want on TV right. where it's like, if it was a straight couple, they'd be kissing, but when it's a gay couple, they hug, you know? Mm-hmm. So as soon as they start tonguing each other down, I was like, oh, oh, wait, no, this is, okay, yes, this is about, <laughs> why, why, why has this never happened before? But I had that moment of like, what happened, what happened there? Did, oh, 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 he's gay, oh, okay, right. yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, 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 okay. you so he gonna fuck this nigga, okay, right. well, yeah, yeah, yeah you, that's you, his man. You went prepared for it, yes. <laughs> why wouldn't he fuck his man? Like, yeah, they in love. <laughs> It was a quick, it was a brief second. My haircut got fucked up. My my glasses was dirty. I was wearing a bow tie next to me. It was, oh no. He was hella like, ashy. Like, yeah, I was since, at- it's, <laughs> it's, since it's Sunday, I do want to evangelize really quickly. Um, Y'all talked about it briefly on a show. I was catching up. I was like three weeks behind, so I have no idea when it was. But the show, uh, Naked Attraction. Yes. <laughs> I'm obsessed. Obsessed. Uh, it's my Roman Empire. It's all <laughs> I can talk about. Everybody who sits and talks to me, I have to tell you about Naked Attraction. It's a it's a dating show where everybody is naked except for the person mm-hmm. picking the people, and they raise up the little thing like a part at a time to the face, mm-hmm. and then the voice being the last thing, and then the person whittles it down to two people, and then they get naked. And come out and pick the person. Then they go on a date. And the amazing thing about the show is that they have every kind of body. And it really like puts you in a, because they do it in a scientific way. And they'll like interject little scientific thoughts about attraction and whatever, whatever. But you get to see every kind of every part. And it really puts you in a position to be like, oh, wow, everybody has a body and a right. something on that body is attractive to me, right. Right, to me. Right. Um, like every kind of penis, every kind of vagina, whatever. And it's it's often they the person in a bigger body, they don't go first, but they'll go like right. second and they'll be the most attractive person. And every time they raise up to the face, the person's like, oh damn, like damn. Right. <laughs> oh, because they already like, kicked them out or whatever. Right. Mm-hmm. Oh man, that is so the word. They reveal you when you get right. kicked out. Uh, and it's typically, in my opinion, the right. person that has a bigger body always is like facially the most attractive. And then there's like a bunch of frogs with like muscles. It makes sense though, like, because like look at Hollywood, man. When you get older, what's the thing? They start doing all the face surgery and shit. Mm-hmm. They be like, you gotta put some fillers in your face. I'm fat, mm-hmm. man. I got the fillers already, yeah. dog. I'm, I'm gonna be good. I'm here, I'm gonna be good for a while. Yeah. Y'all want this. Y'all want y'all yeah. putting the collagen in. I already it's natural over here, baby. Um <laughs> I'm my, not like a very uh, uh for myself, I'm not yeah. like a very body confident person, but right. the show is really helping with that because now like I'm spending more time naked because I'm actually seeing bodies that look like right. mine. And the creator of the show was saying in this article that it's kind of like the opposite of Love Island and those type of shows where people are like in their bikini. He's like those people, those shows are designed to make you feel bad about yourself. Like yeah. our show is designed to make you feel good about yourself. Yeah. And it really does. It really does. Yeah. yeah. And also something I've realized too, and this might sound minor, but something that kind of helped me kind of love my body more is whenever I get out the shower, but I actually just, st- just look in the mirror and stare at my body. I don't cover it up. I don't, I don't make go to lotion and down on us. I just stare at it like yeah. it, in its natural form. And when you do that, you'll start appreciating that. And also, you can tell if people paid it more to their body, they could tell if their body was actually going through something. Because sometimes yep. we're so busy covering, 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 covering that sometimes you might not notice that there might be, you know, small molds for them. And not trying funny or something like that because you never actually took the time to get to know, know and notice your own body. 
Um, it also reminds me of my idea for a dating show, which is Glory Hole. So the Glory Hole, <laughs> we, we we don't reveal the whole bodies. It's just like a circle in the uh, in the wall, and then you go ahead and get the sex out of the way first. So mm-hmm, everybody mm-hmm. sees if you're sexually compatible immediately. I feel that, yeah. And then yeah. if you're sexually compatible, then you can go on a date. You know, okay. and see if you like okay. the person. Go ahead and get the tension. Yeah. Because yeah, I feel right. like that also is a big stigma that a lot of people have. A lot of worry. People worry about sex and yeah. when yeah. you have it's sex. Be the first date, yeah. the third date. Am I gonna be a hoe? That I, no, everybody's right. a hoe. We all, we all fucking <laughs> each other. We all doing all the sex through the wall. And then it's like, what's your personality like? Let's go out and have some food. We already did the glory hole sex. So anyway. right. I think it's a great idea. I would be willing right. to host. The other banter thing, too, is I got so fucking high at the Hornets game. Oh, my God. Yes, you did. I thought oh something was wrong. my fucking God. All of a sudden, I was talking to Roger. I was like, he got real quiet. I kept, I was like, shit was happening in the game. He wouldn't respond. I was like, are you okay? Because I, right? I was just trying to keep it together. Like, I was closing my eyes and seeing colors and shit. I was like, you know, oh. You know, I'm somewhat of a flight attendant. Uh, mm-hmm. you should carry. It sounds odd, but carry around some like peppercorns. And if you ever get what like, I hear. so high that you think you're about to die, just like chew on a peppercorn, and that shit will go away. But I I'm a firm believer in like this is why you got on the ride. So right. just be on the ride. That's like what don't. I did. Just yeah, that's what I did. Yeah. yeah, I just yeah. talked myself through it. I said, listen, right. man. Right, fight, don't fight it. Go with yeah. it. Because if you fight it, it's just gonna make it last long. It's gonna feel yeah. worse. And so I just, I just leaned into it and yeah. was like, you know, fuck it. I'm just in this chair, space coasting up this bitch. Yeah. And it was a. It, I was not nearly as mad at, at at the game as other people was mad at the game because I was like, you know, we all won, and this game is backing <laughs> us with the fact that we're all slowly dying and we won't right. win. Right. So these points don't really matter, and they're trying their best. So yeah, that, let's just calm down. Yeah, that's that's yeah. what Roger's brain was, and uh, 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 you know, because we we pay for the fancy tickets, we had a buffet, so child, we would just eat in and drink it off. You can it's eat a, and drink. Listen, it's a great place to be hot. Mm-hmm. Because, like, have you ever gone to a Hornets game on weed? Come on. <laughs> I was out here like, can can we have some more cookies? Yes, <laughs> it was. Oh, you can eat that. We yeah. were eating it up. I was eating cookies and sandwiches and shit. And was bringing me cokes. It was amazing. But yeah, I was. I was. I did tell her like, uh, as soon as it started hitting, I was like, "Oh, you have to drive. So <laughs> you'll, be, you'll be taking us home tonight." I'm volunteering you. This motherfucking this edible was hitting. Um, that edible. Uh, that edible was sitting next to you, rubbing your back and shit. Like, hey, listen, how's it going? How's it, going? it was. It was oscillating. It was oscillating between like. Like, like, are you too high? Are you gonna motherfucking right, right. You're about to die, bitch? Are you about to, is your heart rate going up, nigga? Check your Fitbit. You gotta, do, was, you gotta tell yourself the same story. I'm actually not gonna die. Right. I'm, I'm not actually going to die right now. Yeah, All right. So that, yeah. like, the edible will go there, and then like two minutes later, the edible will be like, This is the greatest fucking experience of my life. Of my man. life. We, we can't even believe we here. You should be so proud of yourself. You made it. You ruined it. Like your, your inner child is like, look how cool you are. Right. <laughs> Off of 10 milligrams. Right. It's amazing. It's like some, right, exactly. There's some people, there's some people behind us that's doing their own thing. I'm like, do they know I'm high? Are right, they right. Me? <laughs> they said you know what they're probably like this old man is tripping. He's high as hell. <laughs> like, no one gives, and then uh, then it would come back. No one gives a fuck about you. Everyone's watching the game. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> no. And Karen said she noticed I was high, but honestly, she didn't notice for a long time. Like not for a long time. I was I was gone for a quarter and a half before Karen was like, yeah. You okay? You put like this. <laughs> I, I just said a picture because everything was normal, and then all of a sudden it just got. Silent. I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, she was like, you okay? I was like, right, I'm, I'm extremely high. <laughs> yeah, the silence. I'm watching the game. I'm listening, and I hear no response. After a while, I kept saying, 
something not right. He's not responding to, to, to LaMelo getting thrown past half court. What is happening? <laughs> but truth was, he was responding just like inside. He was like, oh. Yes. <laughs> I was like, oh no, I hope he's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I knew how to express that, but we don't need to do that. <laughs> it's why more people should do weed. I'm telling you, the world would be such a more relaxed place because like you Mello do was- have... You do have that moment of like, oh, am I going to die? Uh, but it doesn't last. Mm-hmm. It's not like P- PCP or some shit. You're not going to fucking right. try to pull the emergency handle in the cockpit of the fucking right. plane. What right. are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, that's, I, I still, I, and this is just how my brain is all wired, but in my brain, that is still the funniest fucking thing, and I wish they had it on tape. Like I know, and maybe it's on tape somewhere, but I Probably my is. real tears thinking about like this man is, saying, yes. I am not okay. I'm not okay. The <laughs> fucking engine turn off button. <laughs> oh my god. That's you a know great they beat scene. his ass. I would be the shit. And then when they kick him out that flight attendant, he uh out the cockpit, he told the flight attendant, like, you need to cuff me. I'm like, oh, you ain't got to worry. You're not fitting to be conscious, buddy. Don't worry about the cuffs. I'm about to beat your ass. Right, that's the <laughs> least you know. Oh, man, I couldn't work on a plane. If all that flight attendant, as soon as he came out, I'd be like, this motherfucker tried to crash plane, everybody. Hey, he tried to crash plane. Everybody beat his ass. It's a group project. Beat his okay, ass. first class, y'all first. First class, y'all, y'all get y'all lick first. Then we go in business class. Right, because cause y'all, cause y'all at the front of the plane. Economy, like, don't worry, economy. We know y'all the angriest. Y'all gonna go last. Right, y'all, y'all, y'all the upset as Motherfucker, the pilot turned into a black mama. No, I'm not. The pilot turned into a black mama, like, right? When right. I land this plane, that's right. your last. That's right. your ass. Okay, okay. Like when you will fuck up in church. Okay, listen, listen. Oh, and, and, and they was all white because the, the the dude was like, yeah, it was like a little scuffle. I was like, man. They'd have been like, we found him. His eyes was black. He had a broken. Because you know what? Them five seconds would have turned until we got to the and it's two ground. It's two co-pilots. So I would have been like, all right, you fly the plane. And, I, and let I'm me get his like, ass. Let me get 45 <laughs> seconds. Then I'm going to fly. You get your 45. Then we're going to let the passengers get some. Because this motherfucker out of his goddamn mind. Right. Don't kill us all. fuck you doing with mushrooms? The, the, yo, is the that your first time? Try? First try, you gonna do it in the cockpit, nigga? What the fuck? No, you know, from I've never done it. From what I heard, you need a guide. So no, thank you. Thank God so he said off. he did them um, like two days before, and he was having like after. Effect. I don't know. I've never done mushrooms. Right. The first time I saw somebody on mushrooms, this girl threw up everything she ever ate That's in life. I and I was yeah. like, yeah, I'm good. What if I see my face and it melts and I can never look at my face again? You know how much I like looking at my face. What the fuck? They I'm lost gonna do? Me. They lost me at throw up and shit. You yeah. lost me. Yeah. That's not my drugs. That's not my drugs of choice, dog. Yeah. That's I already have too much stress around those two things in my life. I don't right. want to add some additional. Well, we 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 motherfucking taking it up to the hard level. Nah, right. I like I, I'm on all Madden. Just some <laughs> minor, some minor psychosis that may extend after you take the drugs. Like. No, yeah, no. I'm good. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I like to have an off time. I like to yeah. have something in mind where I'm like, and then I won't be high eventually. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> they lost me with LSD when they say you can have a flashback. I said, nigga, what? Hold on now. Mm-mm. It was like, yeah, years later he was driving on the highway and he just had a flashback. Like, no, nah, man, that's that, that's the, who who made these drugs? That's too much yeah. drugs. Not too good. much. I was yeah. at a party one time and this girl was like, Have you ever taken? I think it was um like a mild horse tranquilizer or some shit, some some drug that she was like, yeah, it's supposed to mimic the moment you die. I'm like, I only want to do that once and quiet as it's kept. I don't even want to do it that time. Right. That's, I, I would like to be as unaware as possible. And how do y'all know? Right. And how do y'all know? <laughs> Like, how do you even it? fucking know? Yeah, they, they, they're, they're like, would you like a drug that takes you to death and cross over and come back? No, thank you. I'm right. good on that type of drug. Right. Oh. Yeah. I don't even like that water they call liquid death. Like, y'all calm down. Right. You know, I've stayed away from it because of the name. I know I'm racist, but I was like, bitch, you call liquid death. I'm good. Calm down. What the fuck? <laughs> All right. That's been our banter, y'all. Let's get into some other segments. But first, I have to play some more of this dope ass music. All 
All right. <clears throat> As fellow food connoisseurs, uh, allow me to take a detour to look smacking good for one second. Yeah. Because there is some good news out there, guys. Exciting things are happening at Burger King. Welcome to Burger King. Oh, uh, what's in those new chicken snack wraps? What's in the new what's chicken What's in the new snack? chicken wraps? Mary? Crispy chicken. Tasty flour tortilla. Crispy chicken. The new chicken snack. Oh man, get it. Yes, that was my ringtone. So <laughs> not it's not. Burger King, but KFC is bringing back its chicken wrap with with, and they add cheese to it. Oh, let's go! Mm. Let's go! Let's go! Chicken wrap, fried chicken tenders. Oh wait, they got some more new shit. They adding macaroni and cheese to it. Hold on, I ain't never had this one. Hold on, macaroni and cheese inside the wrap. Right, I'm gonna have to. I might have you to said, just check it out to see. Did, did you say KFC? Yeah, not since uh, the Double Down have I at least wanted to like. Been curious about KFC food. <laughs> yeah, K- 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 I'm mad KFC took away that chicken wedge. They're not chicken wedges, but uh potato wedges. Yeah. That, when I heard that on y'all show, I was like, uh, what is the reason? To- what what's yeah. the reason to going? They hurt me with that one because that was yeah. really all they had left was a potato Maybe. wedge. <laughs> That was like when Taco Bell took away that motherfucking Mexican pizza. Yeah, we have to sign a petition to be yeah, like, like, bring it back. Bring we it got back. it back, okay? My sister in Christ, we did Listen, that. We okay? did that. They, I was Listen. tagging them. I don't even do this. I was tagging them on social media, like, what the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck, bro? And it, was, it was during the middle of a motherfucking pandemic and shit. I'm like, I don't have anything to live for. And you were fucking around. Oh, and fuck them. They fuck, fuck them. They owe me some money because I, when I was on Weight Watchers in like 2008, you had to, it was like the point system or whatever. And the Mexican pizza with the thing, it was like all my points for the day. So I would get it without the meat. And now they're going to come back talking about the vegetarian version. Like, this is my version. This is the Weight right. Watcher version. Right. The cold version. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> nice try. Yeah, on the low, they, those in the chicken tacos. <laughs> Uh, they they won't kill you on the points, but right. Um, yeah. So they also have one with spicy slaw chicken wrap and just a classic chicken wrap. So they're bringing them back Monday. Um, and then they'll oh they're bringing them back. Uh, November twelfth. They announced that they announced it. Uh, Monday. So all right, that's what's that's, that's like, what's that's up. Slaw, that slaw sound like it might be a little something. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. See, the mac and cheese, I'm not really yeah. like against with. I don't like. I'm not a big throw mac and cheese in it, guy. Mm-hmm. I think people do too much with that. Well, I'll I try agree. a bite just to, to to confirm so we can review it for you know research purposes. But right, the slaw one sound like it'll actually be hit. I'll ask Reggie to go try that mac and cheese. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, Reggie will try. Reg- yeah, Reggie will try that. Back. Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. not. I don't like. I don't like what they doing to mac and cheese lately. It's getting out of yeah. control. Like this, yeah. they, they throwing shit. I'm lobster that, mac and cheese. That whack. That uh, is oxtail. They putting oxtail in the mac and yeah. cheese. Stop, no. stop fucking around, everybody. This is not okay. It's the no. most I'll do is like the fried mac and cheese ball. That I, I've you had. Know, that's, that's yeah. 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 But it was. It's good enough by itself. Damn it. We exactly. stop doing shit to mac and cheese. It's good enough in a traditional baked glass dish. Yeah. <laughs> bake it if yeah, bake it if you want to like really throw some yeah. breadcrumbs on that shit or something. Stove top, I'm okay with that. You know, I prefer it baked, my personal preference. But you know, mac and cheese is mac and cheese. Yeah. Sometimes you have a very specific craving for Nickelodeon orange mac and cheese. Ain't nothing wrong right. with that. Totally like, respect. Well, you go. I want mac and cheese, but what I don't want to do is do a seven layer dip. Of cheeses on this mac and cheese, mail. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, doing so sometimes you like doing right. You like I go the short version. So that's why I say I do stove top. I'm not against that. Yeah, we just we just really got over the whole like throwing the Cheetos dust on everything. Like we really just came out of that. That was my own we personal did. pandemic of niggas that can't cook throwing that Cheetos dust on shit, being like, oh, ain't it hot now? I'm like, not no. really. Not really. Nah. Mm-mm. As, Mm-mm. as a person who's north of forty, don't give me hot stuff. My booty hole is a very sensitive All area. Right. As we age, you know, you gotta be gentle with the the, the exit. Exactly, you gotta yeah. be careful. And my thing is, when they do it, they always do the traditional one. 
what happened to me, the Blue Ranch people? The cool, I mean, the cool ranch people. Don't nobody ever put cool ranch on cool everything. Ranch had, cool ranch had a moment too, but I'll just did have a little moment. Put the processed chips on the, the food that's not processed. It, it, I just don't get it. <laughs> I don't get I don't get the allure. I feel like y'all just fucking up regular good food. I oh, it's that. devil. It's, I made some deviled eggs with fucking flaming hot Cheeto dust. Like, nigga, why? Wow. We mm-hmm. and you know what I do when I want flaming hot Cheetos, you know what I do. Eat some flaming hot Cheeto. That's yeah. it's a new concept. It's revolutionary. Yeah. <laughs> uh, have y'all have y'all tried the um, Mexican corn Cheetos? No, oh, I have the Mexican seen street corn. corn. If you see them, they in a light lime green bag. Get them. Get them. Get them. Get them. Okay. Get them. All right. I'm and the look. um the Funyun flavored Ruffles. Oh, that okay. sounds delicious. Okay. I'm on the lookout. Thank you for putting me on. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of. <laughs> This is going to sound way more salacious than I meant, but speaking of flaming out, Mike Pence has ended his 2024 presidential <laughs> visit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no pun intended. I didn't um, know this was the gay news section. Yeah. I, 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 I was like, this is a great segue. Then I seen this. I was like, oh, fuck. Well, not, not, not the way y'all think. This is a great segue. Anyway. No, my um, everybody knew he wasn't gonna last. I don't understand his his milk tote ass uh, out there with with no poor perspective talking about vote for me. Get out of here, sir. He was he was he uh ended his um bid at the Republican Jewish Coalition conference in Las Vegas, Nevada. He said, "It's become clear to me this is not my time. It ain't never gonna be your time." And it was never his time well, the and, whole and, time. And, and people have not been giving him money like from the beginning. Like when they did them polls and shit, they was like, "No, nigga, not you." Yeah. Did he think the people shouting "Hang Mike Pence" were then going to vote for him? Like I don't understand what he thought was gonna happen. Especially when you didn't embrace being an antagonist. I just don't understand this man. I don't understand Republicans in general. These are the most cowardly, craven people in the planet yeah. because. To me, if you really want that Trump voter, it's the easiest thing to do is you just got to be an asshole. Yep, and double right. that. I, like, he should have been out here like, man, fuck Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. Fuck these people that said they going to kill me. I, I wish I would run up on me. I'm Mike Pierce, bitch. And right. everybody would have had to give some level of deference to like, well, shit, he a real one. Like, the rest of us scared to say we don't like Trump because his voters won't fuck with us. He the only one willing to say the truth. He's going to pick up some... It's, it's the only strategy to pick up some votes. Right. Mm-hmm. Everything else, this whole like, I love Donald Trump, but you know, mm-hmm. he tried to kill me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm sorry he tried to kill me, everybody. I'm you sorry. are not trying to win. Oh, listen, I don't mean him any ill will. I wouldn't put him in jail if it was me. Okay. He just tried to kill me and my family, but I wouldn't put him in jail for that. Like, fuck you. That's not going to work. It's incredible because all of those candidates are basically auditioning to be the vice president. Right. He was. The vice president, he fucked that up. He can't do that again. Chris Christie has a little bit of balls to like sneak out against Donald Trump, but nobody like fuck with. Yeah, yeah nobody fuck with yeah. Chris Christie. If I was Mike Pence, I would have came out blazing. Like, nigga, wear a wig. He be having on right. makeup. Like, Damn. uh, he had COVID. He almost died from the fucking COVID. He stopped wearing a mask because his self tanner was coming off on the inside. I would be spilling all the tea. I would talk so much shit about him, his kids. I yeah. I would just copy and paste Twitter as my fucking yeah. like my debate notes would just be tweets. It'd just be like, oh, ah! that's why your hair look like this. You know what I'm saying? That's why your daughter, you want to fuck your daughter, don't you? <laughs> They'd be like, I would tell, damn, this man off stage. <laughs> <laughs> I would tell the voters uh his actual opinion of them, like right. this is what he be saying about y'all. Right. FYI. Like they be asking me policy questions and shit. Like, what are you gonna do about climate change? I'd be like, I think we should change the fact that he wanna fuck his daughter. How about that? <laughs> that ain't weird to y'all. Y'all okay with that climate in the White House? Right. Everybody's like, Mike Pence, you gotta get him off stage. They be like, he turned the debate into a roast battle. Right. This nigga ain't this nigga say he weigh the same as Cam Newton. That don't make no sense. <laughs> Look at him. Not Look at him, a, America. Not, not with a better like that. Yeah, that is a he like, needs to uh, turn into like an evangelical preacher and just start fucking pointing out his sins. Yes. I mean, you you the one that's religious. Right. I mean, um, in other news, let's talk about Joe Biden. His administration initiates an effort to convert vacant offices into affordable housing. People have been saying that that's what they should do for years. 
That's a great idea. But I'm, he mm-hmm. supports genocide, Rod, and we yeah. do not get stimulus checks, and he will not pay off our student loans. So we should hand right. over all three branches of the government to the other motherfuckers because yeah. they're going to be so much better at it. <laughs> right. Yeah, we're, we're not going to vote. We're going to waste our vote on third parties who never have a chance to win because that's what we do. And I don't yeah. mean to belittle the situation. Like I understand the anger and the hurt. I don't Agreed. understand why we've we've started to turn on each other online and started fighting right. about that shit. Like and like a vote, don't vote. Like I don't. I just don't understand what is the reason to be like shouting at each other about it. Because what can we do? There's a handful of evil men who love power in the world who are using the rest of us as pawns. What are what can we do? People say that like during Nazi Germany during the that people just turned a blind eye and the world watched this happen. I probably believe that people was like going to work and try to feed their family and take care of their elderly family members. And like, that's, I, that's the whole like, point. The, we're living through the shit right now. What am I supposed to do? What am I, the very littlest of things that I can do that makes me feel like I can help is vote. So that's what I'm going to do. If you want right. to use your power and not vote, that's on you. I just don't understand why we are all fighting each other. Yeah, I think uh, I was on the Karen Hunter show yesterday or two days ago, and they, we had a caller that was calling in about how she's not voting this time and stuff. And, um, you know, I just asked her a few simple questions that kind of shut everything down. Like, I think she couldn't deal with the conundrum happening in her own brain. But I was like, OK, because she was like, listen, I drive people to the poll. I encourage people to vote. I do this. I, I'm in Texas. I, da, 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 da. I said, OK, what you're a very liberal person of the goals that you would like to see accomplished in your life. What would be better without Biden as president? for your goals because you because she wasn't just a one person voter it was a, a one yeah. one issue voter she had a bunch of issues and i was like which of these issues are going to help because he's not in office and because you know it'll be donald trump or some republican mm-hmm. what what won't be harmed that you're into and then she just couldn't really come anything and i think people are just dealing with like it's an emotional response yeah and i just think at, at the age i'm at and just the way we were introduced to politics as kids. We weren't introduced to these being our buddies. And Mm-mm. I think for a lot of the kids that, especially those who were kind of spoiled by growing up in the Obama era, they really feel like a president is supposed to be a buddy. And like, yeah, I want to be able to go down his house and like <laughs> with him. And I'm like, yeah, it's just a job. Even when it was Obama, I felt like it was a job. And I thought he was a really good president, very cool president, all that shit. But it was always like, but he has a job to do, and and the job is not a a nice job. It's a job right. of controlling an empire. Yeah, and also, yeah. They, the way we were introduced to it was different. Uh, a lot of us were introduced to it, you know, older generations who, you know, a lot of them were alive when Martin Luther King and Civil Rights, like, they've been through some shit, so they like, nigga, get your black ass out there well, and goddamn vote. What I mean is, like, even in school, we had civics, and then we had True. the... Um, during the presidential election, we did the kids' election where we kids would yeah, vote. We did that. And so we weren't introduced, and it wasn't sexy. It was fucking like Ronald Reagan and George W. Bush. And like it wasn't this like like this superstar shit <laughs> that, that people want now where your politicians are your celebrities. I think it kind of I, I think it kind of has always been that just in a different way because ever since the advent of television more attractive candidates started winning like all them frog looking dudes were all before like photographs and stuff and then like with Kennedy we kind of turned a corner where the whole country was like obsessing over our young quote unquote attractive president and his beautiful wife I think the Kennedy I think a JFK started all that but I think what's different um now at least from my perspective is like people don't care it's just like am is my life good or bad and I'm going to point to the person in power um, based off of those conditions. And I and a lot of the young people who or not even necessarily young people, like progressive people who are over Biden, like their people are saying things like, if I'm a Muslim American, you think I'm gonna calm down about this come election time. But like the other president has enacted a travel ban against Muslim countries. So I don't I, like it's it sucks. I get it. And everybody wants to argue the lesser of two evils. But I just want to know, like, by not voting or giving up or going third party, 
the other evil, like what are they going to do that is yeah. going to be better for right. anybody? Better. Let's say you get a stimulus check. What are they going to do about the policy on the world stage? Like that stuff. Yeah, well, even then, you didn't even get the stimulus check from like from them specifically. Like Biden put out, gave us a, a stimulus check when he got an office that was bigger than that, you know, like, yeah. and of course, Trump did not want to get through the stimulus check and then threw his name on it at the last second. And, Delayed mm-hmm. it because it was like, my signature got to be. And I was like, yeah, well, and it's stuff that's is. easily accessible, easily you can learn it. It's not, it wasn't hidden at the time it was written about. But I think people don't want that. But here's the thing. I don't think it's about um, even a, like, I think the Kennedy thing is almost like an outlier. Like, the celebrity president thing is different than the attractive president. Because we've had some ugly presidents since then. Um, George H. Bush won in, like, 1988 against Michael Dukakis. And Michael Dukakis is serving face. Really attractive man. Yeah. Yeah. Face card never declined. Yeah. So, to me, it feels like... um, the but the celebrity of it that's how like as ugly as trump is he's a celebrity to them yes he's, he's the uh reality tv show villain that is yeah. my brother and i talked about that there's uh, people love a villain they love right. a villain and they thought it was funny it was a novelty it was a gag the republican party yes, they didn't take it was, seriously yep the Republican Party thought he was stupid and that he would bend to their will and they would get whatever they want. So they went full throat to support for him. And then he went fucking rogue because he can't read. Right. And the thing that gets lost with Obama is they tried to reduce him to a celebrity, but he's a politician and a person that takes doing the job seriously. Yeah. So like that was the Republicans like push back on him. Like he's just a celebrity. It's like, I don't know. Every time he opens his mouth, it sounds like he has thought out policy position so it's not really doing anything for me that y'all call him a celebrity he just happens to be much more popular than y'all and people like him more than y'all and so y'all think that's a knock but what did they go do they went and got an actual bona fide he's only been a celebrity person to run the country because they do believe in that bullshit and he's not like i say he's not an attractive man it's just Mm -hmm. we we got one we we got ours so yeah um, bill Bill yeah. Clinton, too, he was a celebrity president, but in because, like, I remember when he went on Arsenio Hall, Arsenio. yeah, people would call that pandering these days. <laughs> Somehow he's immune to it, but yeah, he was yeah. pandering. Yeah. I think he had all the black men vote because he would like pogs, and they was mm-hmm. they was into that. They was like, mm-hmm. but you see these women that he getting accused of harassing, right? They think. And then it was like, they go to black vote. Cool. Um, but yeah, the Biden administration, I, the thing I was going to say I like about them is they can be pushed. And yes. he's his administration and, and him to a certain extent are probably the most receptive I've ever seen to yeah, like, that was like the public pushing on things. And I kind of like that. Um, even in even in the the uh, conflict happening um, in, in Gaza right now, there's statements that he's put out that people within his administration have been saying like, oh, we would like him to say blank, but the upper management in the administration is shutting us down. We're not getting through. And then he basically goes around them and says it like, no, we, I, we, you should delay the, the ground war. Um, you need humanitarian aid. You know, we need a pause in this conflict. Um, so I think, you know, it's never going to be as good as Twitter would need it to be, but it ne- it's there's never going to be fast. a president that can do that. Right. Um, but yeah, this idea is one that I've seen floated around on like Twitter and in like podcasts and stuff to hear the administration be like, that's a great idea. We're They announced on um, Friday, the federal initiative involves multiple departments to address the shortage of affordable housing and surplus of vacant office buildings due to the pandemic. Um, this presents an area of opportunity to both increase housing supply while revitalizing main streets. It's a win-win, says Lael Brainerd, director of the National Economic Council. We're utilizing resources from across the government. Yeah, and something that uh, you kind of talked about, particularly in New York City with the Airbnb and the way that's structured, it's one thing to be like, hey, we're going to limit and put restrictions on it. But what you actually need to do is come in and force people to actually take those spots and make them a yeah, I, I afford like, housing. If not, it's not gonna make a difference. Yeah, that was the thing for me was uh when they talked about the Airbnb stuff, I was like, Yeah, that'll be 
a little good for the rent, but it's not going to fix the rent the way it's supposed to Mm-mm. because too many of these buildings is vacant. If you just fucking take some of that downtown space and turn it into fucking like apartments, that the rent will come down real fast because mm-hmm. then you got more buildings than people and shit. Right now, it's, it's way more people than buildings. Niggas living in fucking uh, a, a loft and it's four people in that shit. That ain't supposed to happen. Mm-mm. Um. In news that's that's uh not really news, I just I'm surprised that it's just now being brought up. But Black China says Tiger started dating Kylie Jenner when she was 16. She was underage. People have been saying that, and I, the whole time we we've been talking about this for years. I was like, nobody's gonna talk about her being a fucking child. Her being a child is irrelevant. I was like, no, I was the whole time I was like, this is a child, this is a child. Everybody act like this is okay. This is not okay. I understand the celebrities, but this shit don't make no sense. Yep. Um, yeah, Black China is opening up about her breakup with Tyga. Um, she says that he began talking to Jenner when she was still a teenager, leading to their split. I felt I feel like it ran its course, and then he started talking to Kylie at the time, which she was like 16 or something. Yeah, I was engaged and stuff, so that's kind of what ended it. She said on the Vile Files. I don't know that podcast, but yeah, that's um that's Nick Vile. He was a former contestant on The Bachelorette and also went on to become The Bachelor, I believe. Oh, thank you. All right. Uh, yes. mm-hmm. White people news. White people news. <laughs> oh, white people in the encyclopedia. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, um, they so I, I always thought it was weird. It is interesting that it's now only coming up kind of because she's telling her story, but you know, I get it. Games to be so not told. I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna knock you, but I it just felt like that should have been a bigger deal when it was happening. And yes, every time we ever talked about it on the show, I'd be like, But ain't she like 16? Right. Mm-hmm. Um but if her mom and them knew and didn't care, like, yeah, what mm-hmm. Juwan said, yeah. The the mom and them do. So they do. What she was supposed them. to do. Yeah, Let's, what we supposed to do. They the let her get plastic surgery and shit at a young age so they probably were like it's fine chris jenner is gonna listen chris jenner is the original um travis kelsey and their mama like she momaged them people that she had them on the stroll one day I, i'm i hope to have my moment when mm-hmm. black people especially black women will acknowledge chris jenner for her contributions to society yes. because you want to talk about making something out of nothing Child, you want to talk about a, a yeah. dollar and a dream? You want to talk about a, a whole a, dynasty, a, a vagina that birthed a dynasty? Come and on. don't get me started on the diversity and inclusion <laughs> she got going on over there. Because everyone could get in the mess, okay? She see potential in the uh, uh, look. Black China and them was over there. Like the fact that they was even over there at all tells you a lot, okay? She had everybody on the stroll. The sun, she like listen, okay. We cuck in America. We not turning nobody down. Okay. Mm-hmm. Athletes, rappers. She, she, was, she was like, so we not on E no more. What bitch? We going to Hulu. This train never going to stop. Oh, your mic. We can't. I don't think we can hear you for your mic. Oh, okay. Give us a second. Oh, but yeah. Liv, yeah. Chris, Chris, she the blueprint. All these moms coming after her trying to pimp their kids. And like, it, it, it ain't the same. Like Travis Kelsey mom already fucking up. She tried to downplay her him being with Taylor Swift. I was like, no, no baby. you need to embrace that. You lean into that. You don't, you don't, you talking about it was just okay. No, fam, no, this the whole point. Yeah, like, put it like this. You got to understand that you're not the number one bitch. You just manage. Like, your yeah. job is to be behind the scenes and pop up every now and then. But she, she but, got jealous because she ain't on the motherfucking, uh, she, she, she did them Campbell Soup commercials with them and shit. And she was like, I'm supposed to be the queen bitch. It's like, no, no manage from behind the scenes. Use everybody. Use everybody. Yes, child. Ain't, ain't child the Kardashians child if Taylor Swift was tied up with them we never hit a fucking end of it right yeah they lied on Taylor Swift we didn't hit the end of it All right that was a mess uh Cardi B is in the news uh for a couple reasons the first was she had a tweet that went like viral and had people very concerned um because Fans were on her Twitter talking about, you know, her 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 albums and when is her next album coming and her official next album. You know, mm-hmm. she's been making music, but they want an official follow-up to her first album. And this troll wrote, the only Mexican I know that don't work hard, which uh Cardi's not Mexican, but uh okay. Okay, okay. Um so Cardi, whose father is Dominican and her mother's of uh, Trinidadian of African and Spanish descent. 
Uh, she said, I hope uh, she clapped back on the turtle saying, I hope you and your mom die. I don't give a fuck, y'all. Y'all can call me Mexican Brink. Now I heard my talk shit about everything. That's why I don't release music, she said. Since then, she hinted at suicide by writing, I just want to put a bullet in my head. He going through something. Yeah. And it's definitely like that that vibe of like, um, just like, this is that thing where if you're online too much, right. and I think people, the thing that made her like so beloved is that she was online and that fans felt like they were part of her journey mm-hmm. and they could talk to her, communicate with her, and that she would be you know, receptive to it. And she used to be do like Instagram lives and talk to the people and all this stuff. But as time goes on, there's a line and nobody knows where that line crossed. Well, all yeah. of a sudden it turned, you know, it, it, they turn on you. Yeah. And it's not, and, uh, and it's obviously not everybody, right? Mm-hmm. Like I'd say the vast majority of people love Cardi that yes. follow Cardi and all this, but there's something internally where like the things that you're insecure about, the people that bring those things up, that hurts the most. Yes. And it pushes through the other, like 99% of people supporting you. One person says you lazy. And if you feel any insecurity around either your work ethic or sh- the pressure of putting out a new album or what you should or shouldn't be doing, hear it popping back up, you know? So I think that's what, what happened to make her respond to this one person. Right. Um, and then she did do an Instagram live where she addressed it. She said, when I burst, I'm very outspoken. When I get it into it with one of my bad moments, I will literally curse everybody out. And I'll be like, fuck, fuck. Like, I want you to die, bitch. I want to die. I don't give a fuck because that's just how I'll be feeling in the moment. I was just very overwhelmed yesterday. I was very sad. And I don't know. I feel like I was just having such a good week. And then when I got home and started paying attention to too much shit that people were saying about me mm-hmm. and all the funny shit about me, I started getting upset about it. Yeah, I, I call that emotional cutting. Cause mm-hmm. I used I remember I used to look at like like forums and stuff where people would talk shit about us and be like, what the fuck? Like, why would you like we just doing a show? We just two people. And eventually I was just like, people are, this is what happens. We got big enough. There's people mm-hmm. out there that have things to say that don't like us it's not my damn business nope. you not liking me literally not my business i'm you i don't pay you to like me you don't pay me to like me we i i i make content it's going out into the earth a lot of motherfuckers ain't gonna fuck with it and that's just it you 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 don't like the way i look you don't like my, our marriage you don't like whatever that's your business and i shouldn't want to know Honestly, right. like this, you're not a consultant, you're just a nigga on the internet. So correct. I feel like, but that was something internally in me that was looking for something to either be angry about or upset by, or just looking for approval and ex- an unrealistic expectation of 100 percent approval. And when you're famous as Cardi, every no I can way. put Cardi B search on Twitter and somebody saying something foul right now. Agreed. So I think it came from an internal place, and that's why she, you know. Uh, did that but it's also like she's so hyper online this is why she was like I don't even like sharing when I'm doing good with people right because I know how motherfuckers will take it so right and it's it's also one of those things to where like you say Cardi B was brought up in a generation of her being online is what led to a lot of the popularity and so oversharing it's hard to say tell somebody they're oversharing when oversharing is how they got what they got correct and you know and it's hard to get to the point where somebody who shares like that and somebody goes hey you might want to pull back or hey you might want to talk to a professional you know if you're feeling like this there's a reason why and you know you might need to get help outside of the internet you know and that's very hard for somebody like that who's going this is my bread and butter over sharing yeah can y'all hear me am i back Yes. Yeah, you I got excited and like ripped out the cord and then it wouldn't recognize the thing like I was panicking anyway uh I also just to add to this is it's interesting for these famous people because they're also people and so people are like oh you just gotta be offline and like I quote the great Alexis K Tyler can somebody turn you away from dick like <laughs> so Lizzo just supposed to stop being on the internet because right. people don't like her like right that didn't make sense and now yeah. and like also, everything that's toxic about the internet for famous people is toxic about it for us. Like, yes, we just not so, as famous. So, like, it, then you go first. You know what I mean? Right. That, that's my um, whole thing. The other now, the other thing that's very interesting to me too is Tasha K made content out of this, 
And to me, it felt so sad and unhinged because, like, it's so parasocial. Like, she done got sued to oblivion, to smithereens over there, bank account in red. And she's making videos about, like, empathizing with Cardi and how she DM Cardi showing people the pictures like I DM'd her to tell her this and you know I and, and in the in the DM she's pointing out how like I ain't got the money but I do plan to pay you back I just I'm broke right now da, 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 and all this stuff and 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 it was like my heart goes out to her and stuff and I'm like this is a woman that basically asked you to keep her name out of your mouth and you doubled but, down and, and you lied on her and her family and all this shit and got sued and lost and wouldn't like relent during the lawsuits even. would not but a, according to ballalert.com party b hints at forgiving tasha k and ending legal feud following the youtuber's emotional plea um so it maybe she's gonna let it go Cardi B hopped on Twitter Spaces, acknowledged, seemingly acknowledging Tasha K's emotional plea. Cardi said, in part, my heart is very big. Going to talk to my mom, talk to my lawyers. So um, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Whatever. Maybe this worked for Tasha K and, and she'll get forgiven. It, Tasha it, K it, was in that mess with um, T.S. Madison, too, and Jess oh. Hilarious and, and being um, a turf loudly or whatever. So I just like, I don't know if it's a bit. Um, but she doesn't she doesn't represent herself as like a good person who deserves forgiveness. And like obviously for forgiveness is for you. Like if Cardi wants to forgive that lady to get it off of her heart, then like obviously that's for her mental health or whatever. But she forgive Tasha K, she gonna do it again. She's gonna do something again feel. because she can't this is how she makes her money. Yeah, and on top of that, I can forgive you and be like, bitch, I still want my money. You're forgiven. You still owe me this motherfucking I, coin. I just feel like... Because you, you wouldn't shut the fuck up. Yeah, I just feel like I would not help this scorpion cross the river. No. But obviously, it's it's up to Cardi or whatever and how she's feeling. But yes, this is uh this, this is the clip from... Only way to go is up. And if I go up, her money goes up. That's what I want. I want all of this behind me. I truly want to see Nikki and Cardi. And I've said this to Nikki. I said, I said this to her. She didn't like it. She'll go through bounce when she'll talk to me. She won't talk to me. I don't care because I'm, I'm not starstruck like that. I'm going to tell you the truth. I said, you and Cardi are the same. And she was like, what? I said, you are the same. But... The difference is I, I'm giving you grace and I hold her accountable, but you're older. Mm -mm. This is so parasocial, it's scary to me. Yeah, you don't know either one of these. I'm also people. like not shocked, but kind of shocked that Nikki really be talking to this woman. But Nikki seemed like she out of control too right now. So is that what it is? Is Tasha K a barb? Is that how this all started? I don't know, mm. but it, I see I can see where that could be true just from the way she's talking. But man, it's... man, she said something about T.S. Madison, Mama, unprovoked, something real ugly, and her and T.S. were cool. Like yeah. I just don't, I don't understand how all of this is supposed to work. Yeah. <laughs> right? She's on here crying and shit, and it's just a lot of this stuff is disturbing to me, man. I I, I caught mm -hmm. up with uh, yesterday in the group chat. Uh, in the group text, uh, I caught up on y'all. Remember the TikTok therapist that was like, "Ah, uh, black men need to do blah blah blah," and all this it stuff. It was big. It was champion. oh, I didn't. Uh, damn, I didn't get a chance to watch that. I was outside in these streets last night. Yeah, it's all yeah. good. Yeah, and, okay. And, and people was like, "But dog, your whole job." Because she was talking about black men and stuff like that. People was like, if "That's you what she were was my therapist." Turning, that's what she was turning it into. She ended up losing her like therapist job. Well, she should have. But now she's like a social media therapist kind of person she has a only friends account or something I, I don't think it's only fans but she does therapy talk she she talks about therapy while being undressed basically um just like like yeah i and then and like i remember feeling a little bad talking to like bossy and ray about it at the when it first popped off i was like yo i'm not trying to be some type of weird creep but like her like braless leaning over into the camera thing is weird to me because right. her whole thing is supposed to be about therapy but it's like she's low-key 
like thirst trapping, but like a black man, your mental health, uh, your titties. I'm like, uh, okay, cool, you know. Um, but now that she has just thrown the titties out to the world, I'm like, okay, I don't need she, to feel she, bad she about must, that. She, she needs that. Free, yeah. She like, wanted that. I'm about to say this is what she wanted to do the whole time. Yeah, but and, well, the restrictions uh, of like licensing, you know, she was like, oh. well, a lot of her discussions are about attractiveness, dating. Um, oh, okay, it is only fans. Okay, thanks. All right, my bad. Um, but uh, so a lot of her stuff is about like dating still and. Even her black man stuff is more about like attractiveness to them and vice versa, which mm. that's your issue, not ours. Like, right. don't make that into like a diatribe on like all of blackness and all this shit. Just, like, if you got a personal hang up, you want to fuck some nigga or something. I, I'm sorry he ain't calling you back, but that's not. Why am us. I in it? Why am I in yeah. it? Yeah, she, but she okay, low key though. Sis might have have tapped into something because you know like how jokingly people say strippers are like therapists strippers and bartenders or whatever what if the stripper actually mm. was a therapist okay I, right except i watched the videos oh so, damn nah. damn i've seen them <laughs> <Being raped. laughs> no, not it. her not her just like as a concept we have oh yeah yeah no i'm with the concept yeah, i'm with the concept yeah. I, I just okay. mean her specifically, not, she wasn't. She wasn't. She didn't hit. She ain't hit the mark on this. <laughs> when, you said, when you did the deep dive research, you was like, "Wait yeah, a minute." Yeah, it wasn't given. It wasn't given a lot what it was supposed to give. But yeah, man. It, anyway, but it made me think about just the way she sets her camera up, and she's crying on camera, and then she's advising people, and then she's trying to start like a motivational cult for the for for women, but then also yeah. like this shit and that shit. And, and the thing that it kept making me come back to is kind of like this Tasha K thing where it's like you're having an issue and you're turning it into content. Yeah. Yes. You should probably be in therapy or talking to someone that does care about you because social media don't care about you. Half the people in those comments for her are probably like, bitch, just pay what you owe. Ah, ha, ha. You know, <laughs> like, like that, that's not your friends. And it just, you know, and, 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 in, and in a way I can't imagine she's any, a friend to Cardi or Nikki either. It's just all content. Right. And it's also something where because of the attention economy and particularly, you know, with what she does, everything is I got to I got to be harder. I got to go harder. I got to, you know, and, and a lot of times people say things on their platform, not realizing that you might be held accountable and responsible for them. And then the accountability come down with Nikki with with, you know, Cardi being like and the thing with Cardi, like I said, Cardi was like, hey, dog, can you just stop it? You know, blah, 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 blah. I would not trust this woman because now she's exhausted all legal avenues to get out of her responsibility. Yes. So I, now I, she now she got a crisis of conscience. I don't believe it. I, I wouldn't, wouldn't I wouldn't, wouldn't drop it either. Even yeah. if I forgive you, you still owe me that money. You're still going to pay me. I, I think the consequences you. are the only thing holding her to some level of like. Oh man, I I gotta be accountable. The fact that you, as a stranger, said you holding me accountable would have automatically made me be like, yeah, fuck you. You know what I mean? <laughs> I just hold Cardi accountable in a way that no, you don't. You lie on me and got sued and lost. Right. Accountability is an inside job. We Come cannot on. hold someone else accountable. Come through. Not how it works. <laughs> um. All right. Let's get into. Um, uh, another segment that is uh, a lot of people, you know, it's doing is a lot of people love it, you know. Um, and why the fuck is it not coming up on my? Thing? Oh, I see why, because it's not. Uh, oh shit, it's not separated by date anymore. Shout out to Windows, just deciding to be different. Okay, you got <laughs> you just you just being different today. All right. Um, <laughs> We'll just wait for that to load. Um, <laughs> but um, all right, Windows cool. is like upgrade, right? Not like, even upgrade. It just changed. What I wanted to say was kind of talk about some gender wars. We're going to war. Gender war. There's a war going on outside. Gender war. There's a war going on outside. Gender war. That's right. Gender war is time. Okay, people are all about it. Uh, let's see who is Warren today. How about uh, Tyrese Gibson? Black. What happened? Oh, wrong segment. <laughs> Tyrese, I'm gonna go black too. 
Tyrese Gibson's ex-wife, Samantha mm. Lee. Okay? Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. She said that people in her ear drove her to get a divorce. Mm. Mm. <laughs> oh no, this is gonna be real good for the gender war. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, she she said uh she frequently highlights her single life on YouTube. She granted an interview to the Hardly Initiated podcast where she admitted that people around her during her marriage to the sweet lady singer may have pushed her towards a divorce. This now it is it am I tripping or like wasn't his whole thing where her was like she did she different, she better, she from like Africa or some shit. Like I I, I feel <laughs> like that was a thing <laughs> he tried to pull and now he he literally stumbled into that Eddie Murphy uh bit <laughs> about Eddie, why you treat me this way? Like uh he stum- stumbled into that, but maybe I'm making that part up. But I do I think remember that him was was Different. that him or was that some other dude? But I know what you're talking about. I definitely yeah. know. I'm drawing a like I I don't remember the exact details, so maybe I'm conflating a couple of things. But I swear I remember him pulling a. I figured it out. You know, I found <laughs> this how you get a real black. But anyway, <laughs> um. So she says the truth about the matter is that if I had different people in my ear at the time, I would not have made the decision. That decision, no, and that's the truth. Um, she said the 13 minute mark. Okay, well, shit, let's just skip on to the 13 minute mark. Yeah, let's go. And uh, I'll see if I can put it on the screen. We're like, I'm an extremely emotional person. People that know me know that about me. I'm the kind of person that, like, okay, I feel so strong, and I can ruminate, I can get so lost in my thoughts. I know a lot of women are like that. Like, we're a lot, not all of us, right? But some of us are, just like a lot of men can be like that. But I know women specifically, the there will be moments where they'll be like, I'm ready to, I'm ready to be done. I'm ready to be done. I'm ready to be done. I can't stand this. He don't do this. He don't do that. Blah, 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 blah. And we're just focusing on these things. And because you don't have, you don't have a certain um, person in your life to say, to check you and say, sis, what about this? What about this? What about these strings? What about what he's not doing? What like those types of things. Um, That's, that can that can get you thinking about the positive aspects of this person that you may not be thinking about when you're upset. You're only thinking about what you're mad about. You're not thinking about all the other positive aspects of this person. Um, And so in those moments, you need somebody to be the the person for that person. Yeah. um, In those moments. So it's still some people in the chat right now that they still confuse. They, they really not understanding with the pro marriage right or somebody who's an sure. advocate for marriage sure, so sure, if you sure. could just paint the the people who weren't necessarily pro marriage and you come into them or you just expressing these different mm-hmm. issues that you have yeah what type of responses were you actually getting versus leading what you the should've? witness it's not, it's not so much about what sh- what should have been re- received because i think that based upon what had 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 occurred in our relationship by that time a lot of people were at were were saying that this was time for me to to leave this this you know particular relationship yeah it wasn't just me it was my loved ones um mm. i might you know I, I have been seeing a therapist my therapist you know i had people that were like you know this is it's time this is not the best decision for you to remain in as is and so when that happened um or what, what what I mean by pro-marriage is that there is people in my life that it's not so much pro-marriage, it's pro the other person. So my my thought process, based upon the clip that I shared in on my own page, was he had people in his life that would advocate for her mm. in her most in, in his most heated moments. And he wanted his wife to have people that would advocate for him. In those moments, and so it wasn't necessarily okay. All right, I think I get what she's saying that the people in her corner were just you know fuck them, leave, get the fuck out of there. It doesn't matter. And she feels like if she would have had somebody in her corner that would at least offer a different point of view, she might have like worked it out or stayed or thought about staying. But she had zero people like that. But I don't know, having zero people like that kind of. 
I don't to me it'd be like evidence that this motherfucker ain't shit, but that's just me. <laughs> like if all my homies was like, you should get the fuck out of that, I'd be like, well, okay, clearly I'm not tripping. I was thinking about it. Y'all all agree, but um, I don't know. Now Tyree says he it wouldn't even matter. He still wouldn't get back with her, even if uh it turned out to, you know, to 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 that that she wants to get back with him. He's he's not cool with it. So I think it's like she probably just has some regret because being single is so bad that uh, you would go back to your ex into a relationship that you were very unhappy in because it does provide some stability. And like, you know, people are like the dating pool it has poop in it, but like we're all pooping in it. It's just a bunch of like unhealed, unevolved people working through trauma and not being healed, going out and behaving poorly with other unevolved, unhealed people. So, like, for me, in my opinion, all my friends who are, like, working through their shit, going to therapy, who are really great people, we're all, like, they're single, single, not dating, trying to get their shit together. And then once you get together, you realize it's not that many other people with their shit together. So it's it's very difficult to date. So she's probably, like ain't shit out here <laughs> and like at least i it's the devil you know right and i do remember like tyrese was saying and doing wild shit you know mm-hmm. what shit at the time so you know i don't i don't know that i i do i remember feeling like he was out of control and like man that woman's gonna leave him or she need to get out of there like nigga was making like videos from the driveway it was, it was and, a very public shit too yeah like um uh, and i mean and look maybe it was he was going through it because she was being so like cold to him or something but whatever was happening there it just felt like toxic and like i can see why they wouldn't need to be together but uh as a as content though for the gender wars karen zero to ten what would you give this i would say i get this in about two or three uh, like I say, right now, I judge everything on the Jada Pinkett scale. Her scale is 10. So this right here was just like a blip because for a lot of people, this ain't new news because they've been separated for so long. It's not like he did some new shit for her to comment on. This is like kind of old shit. Like if he did something brand new and it was hot in the streets and then she came out and said this, it might raise the score up a little bit more. Yeah, you're going to have some people that don't like him or whatever that might come out, don't like her. But yeah, this ain't gonna make no splash. Okay. What about you, Nicole? What would you give it? Zero to ten. I'm gonna give this like a six point five because it has a great deal of potential to turn into um these single bitter black women got you to leave your marriage and now you one of them. So I would say like a six point five a six point five. Yeah, I I was thinking the same thing. Now it's been a couple of days old, and I and I really thought this was gonna pick up like um because we didn't have time to cover it last week i was like oh by the time we cover it they're gonna be fighting but um and tyrese even kind of put fuel to the flames because he said if you had people in your ear at that time they must still be in your ear because you still trying to get twenty thousand dollars a month for a five-year-old you make one hundred sixty thousand dollars a year on your own he also said i don't want no one to confuse me releasing songs singing about how i feel about samantha with confusing me wanting this woman back if i wanted her back i would have got her back i don't want sam so I thought, like, well, damn, right. I thought this would have been spicier and it just didn't take off. Like, I, I don't know what happened that this didn't take off. Maybe it's just mm-hmm. we're tired of Tyrese and yeah, it's too old okay. hat for us to get that fresh, like gender war going. But, but at one I, period of time, this was peak this, gender war. It's every element is here. Mm-hmm. Every mm-hmm. element is here. You got your mm-hmm. representation for your bit of black dudes. Finally getting there, like, aha, we got you, we got mm-hmm. you. You know, it's supposed to be in the W column for them. You don't and, never know what's gonna catch on. I don't know that sound wild. It's like some shit catch on to some shit. People be like, nah. Yeah, so I think I'm gonna give it a, a six as well, like a six. Uh lots of potential. I think the content was there. It's not mm-hmm. their fault it didn't take off. Right. Maybe just too much is happening online right now, but this one mm-hmm. should have been a hit. Like this, this should have been bigger than Cheesecake Factory to me. I agree. You know, I yeah, agree with that one. But it didn't work. Um, speaking of Cheesecake Factory, oh, um, I believe I have some uh, some uh, update on that one. Um, or actually, you know what? Skip Cheesecake Factory for now. We might come to that in a second. Um, my man Shannon Sharp, underrated Gender Wars contestant. 
Okay. okay. What happened? Don't sleep on him. He He's out here in the streets. He goes on dates and stuff, and he talks about it. Now, this is an old clip from when he was back on uh, was Speak for Yourself or whatever the fuck that the Skip Bayless show is first, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, <laughs> no, speak for yourself. <laughs> first opinions only. I don't, I don't, you know, whatever they call that shit. Um, <laughs> say it with your chest. Uh, so <laughs> he was he was talking about a date where his he went on a date and his date ordered meatloaf, and for some reason it set off the the curb your enthusiasm in him. Why Shannon so mad? His date ordered meatloaf. The place is not known for meatloaf, but they had it on the menu. Oh, oh, I like meatloaf. I said, but this is not a place that's known for meatloaf. Why would you get it? She got it. And guess what? It's terrible. I said, you, it serves you right. And I shouldn't make you pay for it because I asked you not to get it for the simple fact this place isn't known for that. Get, if I go to a restaurant, Skip, I'm going to get what they're known for. I'm not going, I'm not going to expect a, a, a burger from, from KFC or from Popeye's. That, they're known for chicken. So why would you get something that's really off menu? Why would you do that? By the way, was that your first and last date with her? Yeah, you know, you know, Skip. Yeah. This was recent. No, no. Oh, I, uh, I thought you took her to Mastro's in no, Beverly no, no, Hills. No, 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 Mastro, you know, you know, Mastro, Mastro is reserved for the, you know, the high end clientele. <laughs> oh, not the high end clientele. <laughs> that's hilarious. I mean, damn, Shannon, just at me. I mean, damn, I am her and she is me <laughs> ordering shit, going to the noodle place. There's all the noodles and order and pad thai. No one is going to be noodles and ketchup. They don't specialize in shit. Damn. <laughs> I personally, uh-uh. I just sent you one on Instagram too, that him and that him and Ocho Cinco one. Yeah. And he like, I don't watch those talking head sports shows because their voices annoy me and I don't want to listen to people yell at me on purpose. It's not my kink. Um, but he had a, a interview with Brittany Renner uh, that went viral and he was yeah, like shaming her. Viral. Yeah. He yeah. was like shaming her for her body count. Um, yeah. but then he was talking about, uh, uh, fucking on a date in this one. I'm like, Oh, so you know, okay, good I'm for the not, gander, good for the out. goose. Yeah, I, I mean, and that was the thing I said at the time when he did that. And like, uh, and I'll have to give him credit. That was excellent Gender Wars content. That yeah, was well, like him and Britney. Like, people don't see the people don't see the machine behind. Yeah, it. they just yeah. See, they just think like, and they share it. And I don't mean to to belittle other people, but they share it on the most simple level of like, I'm upset. It's like, well, that's what the fuck they wanted out of that. Brittany right. Renner's been doing a slew of interviews, showing up drunk, acting crazy, going viral over bullshit. And mm-hmm. then this nigga completely played his part of like, oh, 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 oh I'm going to eat some drinks. I'm going to get, I got to get, anybody want some of this? And like, right. I was like, there's no fucking way Shannon Sharp doesn't know uh, at least 20, 30 people that have fucked more people than Britney said. Because right. he's an athlete. It's right. no way. He probably one of them. Yeah, and uh, probably Shannon Sharp probably fucked 36 women in a month. Right. Like it's like it was complete, like, I'm we're selling this together. Because yeah. like she wasn't even offended. And you know, if it was real life and you did that to somebody, uh, like if we was like, Nicole, how many people? And she said, and whatever number she said, I acted crazy. She'd be like texting me, like, what the fuck, nigga? What was that? They right. <laughs> they in cahoots together, right? Britney sipping on her drink, looking at the camera. He looking at the camera. I get it. Y'all made content, but yeah, making faces. Yes. I, I knew that shit couldn't last because I said there's no way. But all right, let's see what he said on this uh, clip. The 1990. Mm-hmm. I met this young lady. She we was gonna go. We gonna go out. I was like, okay. I ain't got a whole lot of money, but you know what? I said, you know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna deny myself something mm. to get her a nice, nice little meal. You know, get a nice little meal. The server comes back, says, "You okay? You ready to order?" I'm like, "Yeah." So I got, I think I got something. Probably cost like thirty, forty dollars. Yeah. And so Ocho, she got the menu, and she just looking. I'm like, "Well, damn, what's she gonna order?" She say, "Uh, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what go with, what go with lobster. Say condoms. I said, because if you order that, we gonna have <laughs> sex tonight. Needless to say." She didn't order that, and I never saw her again. 
I ain't got bread like that, Ocho. You man, you get me on here, Ocho. I get on here with you, man. I was supposed to take this to my grave, man. Oh, that's hilarious. Ocho. I know that's sexist, but that's hilarious at the way he delivered it. Why? Because I ain't shit, and that was funny. When I saw, saw this clip, and when I see every clip with him, I, I wrote this down as one of my banters, but I just didn't put it out. Country black people can make anything funny. Yes. Oh, my God. Anything. And oh, he, my God. He be saying country black shit. That's offensive. Like it's like we sh he should be a more elevated man than this the way he represents himself. But also like, I am laughing, so I guess you got me. I I do mm -hmm. think that's funny that you said that dumb shit. Yes, it's still fuck. Is it fucked up? Yes. Yeah, but she it's didn't funny. give him none. But nope. he underrated gender wars contestant though. I just don't see people putting him up there as one of these people that's making this content. He makes this content on like a weekly basis of something about women and men. And uh, let's score it. Let's go zero to ten, Karen. I would give Shannon, I would give Shannon a seven to an eight mm. because one thing about him is consistent. Like, 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 like I'm throwing in a consistency factor mm. and, you know, people going to talk about it. The show is like really, really popular. People love his show. So people talk about it and they talk about him consistently. It don't cross over, over until the nine or 10 because he ain't got him, he ain't got him like fighting in the streets. If that makes yeah, sense, yeah, yeah, I agree. All right, what about you, uh, Nick? Do what would you give Shannon? Uh, you know, I'm not really. I look away a lot, so I, I see his clips all the time. I don't know how many of them are the gender war stuff, and how many of him is just being on his show. This one in particular, I think it's some it's some decent content. I would give it about a, about a five. Okay, all right. And for me, I give it a seven. Here's what is missing. If he really wanted to get into gender wars, which I don't think he should, but if he really wanted to, he need to be a little less funny. Because mm, right, right now he's so funny, I can't take him serious. Yes. Right. And I, like, I can see how he could say that to somebody and even they wouldn't take him too serious. Like, if he, mm -mm. like, like, like she would laugh at that. They wouldn't go on another date, but she'd be like, oh, okay, so don't order the lobster. Got it. Like, it's a funny way of saying it. Even the thing right. earlier, uh, I forget what the first clip was about, but the, the meatloaf. Like, it's a, it's funny. It's like, you know, I make that joke about Karen ordering stuff that, that <laughs> is not the specialty of the place all the time. And but I just don't turn it into, like, because it's not a date, we're together. It's right. no, like, ultimatum behind it. Like, mm -hmm. if you order that meatloaf, we're not going. It's like, if you order that meatloaf, we'll just have shitty meatloaf sitting in the fridge and <laughs> you'll throw it out three days later. I sure will. You know, act like it's my idea. Um, but yeah, it's so I, I give it like a seven, I think. And I hope he never does go to full. Like, I'm seriously trying to talk to y'all about relationships because I, I really don't think that's a good lane for him. No, you brought up a good point with the straight face. And that's why Jada shit is 10 because all her shit is serious. Don't be no laughing. Jada the best. Don't be no right joke. Now. And th that's why I say I'm kind of scaling everything on that. Yeah. Like, like the only reason why this gets such a high score is because of the consistency. Yeah. But if I'm like looking at, at the forest front and just the joking, like, nah, it would actually be like, now, Jada, you say like a six, like Jada, five or six. Jada's the best right now. And then I'd say second is all the people trying to make like TikTok sketches that aren't sketches. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. the, they clearly are, you know, theater. theater. They're giving us performance. Those people, I mm -hmm. think, are next of the. They're giving us Shakespearean. You're like, yeah. no, bitch. This is just I just happened to start recording in the middle at the perfect time of this argument for y'all to see the mm -hmm. whole thing in context. Wait a minute, let me look over lines. Right, right. Those people are next. Um, all right. Listen, we've been going for a while. I think we should start getting ready to wrap it up. All right, mm -hmm. but we got to play games because our our girl is here. You know, it wouldn't be right. Yes, some games. So I think we should play a little bit of Guess the Race. Okay. Yes. All right. So let's play that music. It's time to guess the race. 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 That's right. It's time to play Guess the Race. The game where we go around the globe, we find different articles and guess the race of the people involved. The contestants today are Karen and, of course, Nicole from What's the Tea podcast and the chat room, who all play along, and they're all racist. Ex-teacher turned model, 60 years old, harassed neighbor after being evicted from Beach Hut. Oh, shit. Just a lot happening in, this, in that sentence. <laughs> a former teacher mounted a campaign of harassment against her neighbor as revenge 
after she was evicted from her beach hut after playing loud music. Michelle Spicer, 60 years old, had paid 15,000 pounds for her beach hut in Goring by Sea in West Sussex oh, okay. following her divorce. <laughs> maybe following I have some her... names on them towns. Maybe I have some names. Okay. <laughs> I'm proud of myself. Okay. I'll be doing <laughs> Goring by Sea feels like not a complete even thought. <laughs> name of a town. But yeah, Goring by Sea in West Sussex following her divorce in 2020, a place she termed as her mermaid heaven. Uh, but she was evicted by 2021. Uh, Rouse, which means fights, escalated after her neighbor accused her of playing loud music on her Mercedes radio near the huts. Spicer became convinced that one neighbor was plotting to evict her. When the hut was taken away from her by the council, she launched a campaign of revenge against the neighbor, which became so severe that the victim was forced to leave town and even change her job. Damn. Yeah. London's high court heard that her behavior led to an anti-harassment injunction, but that Spicer continued to harass and intimidate the former neighbor. Judge Richard Pierce found her in contempt of court for breach, breaching the injunction and gave her a 24-week jail sentence suspended for two years, as well as having to pay her former neighbor's legal costs, an estimated 53,000 pounds. Uh, the woman victim who cannot be named after being granted anonymity by the judge made 30 complaints to the police, leading to two community protection orders being issued to Spicer, yet they appeared to have no effect, the court heard last week. In July 2022, the neighbor felt she had no choice but to seek an injunction to curb Miss Spicer's harassment of her, which barred the former teacher from the waterfront near her former hut, as well as contacting her victim or harassing or stalking her. This, this is crazy that this all started from just, can you turn your music down? Right. right? Uh, despite the injunction, she continued to harass and intimidate the woman to court her. She is charged with contempt of court. Um, the court heard that Spicer had shown little remorse for the victim uh, and seemed to be motivated by a wish to punish the claimant and put pressure on her to make her life difficult, even unbearable, because she did the unthinkable and complained about her antisocial behavior. The victim was forced to uproot her life and change jobs as a result of the harassment. Um, so Spicer says the loss of her pride and joy beach hut had a devastating impact on her, uh, prompting the revenge campaign, which ultimately forced her victim to sell her house and even adopt a disguise while going shopping. Not a disguise. Or going, <laughs> what? She's like, damn, ain't neither one of us going to live there now. Not, not to make the millionth American dad reference on this show, but this is like when Steve... Uh, was getting bullied by Stan, and then he yes. dressed up. He dressed up as an old lady, and they showed the whole shopping trip. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and then Stan showed up and beat him anyway. <laughs> it was so funny. He was like, "This one was like just a slice of bologna, please." <laughs> like, anyway, that, I just feel like that's the person in disguise, like trying to go shopping. <laughs> um, but yeah, so guess the race of let's see where first Michelle Spicer. White. Karen's going white. Nick you. She would sit crisscross applesauce in a soft voice on video after forcing her writers to cross the picket line to explain to us <laughs> oh, why no. it was important for her show to continue. Not Drew right. Barrymore White. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I, was, I was like, she would, she would crisscross applesauce by giving the class instruction on yoga moves. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I bet she was up at 6 a.m. Sunday morning playing Anita Baker loud as fuck. Black says Shay. Living in a beach hut, scuttlebutt white. A space in hell <laughs> next to Queen White. Oh! Uh, was she playing Ski Yee? White. Hated the casting in the live action Little Mermaid movie. <laughs> uh, ironic name since she doesn't season her food. White. Oh, oh Michelle no. Spicer. Uh, you saying she's spiceless. Uh, angry, sad, and disappointed White. Well, Only spice is in her name. White. The correct answer is, and I think the vast majority of you said white, and you got it right. One person did say black. You got it wrong. <laughs> but I applaud your diversity, though, because this was clearly a British story, and you were like, Yes, black still. <laughs> uh, like, they were there too. Here's her bikini pictures at 60. She looks great, but also crazy as hell for like I if, bet you she was partying hard for if that. You said, had 30 complaints. If you put her picture up and said 
this woman is 60 and a former teacher and she likes to model her bikinis and also she's accused of playing loud rock and roll and harassing her neighbor i'd be like all everything you said is true absolutely 100 percent true. her body banging though they should make her the um go to bachelorette yeah she could mm-hmm. be on there okay getting kicked I off i seen that three. and i thought about you and reggie that was hilarious i seen that i was like oh i know they're gonna be covering this shit it's real good i got my mama watching it yeah, I actually saw um, a clip of it yesterday because I guess they're, I don't know, getting to the goat, taking people to their house part or whatever the fuck. Home, hometown. But, hometown, thank you. Uh, and uh, <laughs> it was just so funny because he like, oh, and like he was having a moment of like, you know, intense emotional angst. And he put his hands on both his knees and I just started laughing. Cause I was like, bro, I know, I know, you old man. Like he couldn't sit down, he couldn't get all the way to the ground. <laughs> he was like, oh, man. oh, I'm so stressed out. I was like, yeah, dog, the pants and knees. That's the that's the old people knees on the ground. <laughs> Gary is a sweetheart, and they found him some baddies. Like it's yes. yeah, like it's just it's. The concept of the show, in my opinion, works so much better. Like, let me be the fucking bronze bachelorette. You got a 45-year-old chick and, like, 38-plus-year-old men or, like, a 55-year-old woman. Like, the stakes are so much higher for us. Mm -hmm. I like it as a a concept, too, because, like, I feel like there's a certain age where, like, you can kind of get over some bullshit faster Mm-hmm. Then, like stuff that might be a deal breaker, at, like thirty eight. It's like, well, your kid grown, so and, and you know, okay, you got kids, that's fine. We'll be all right. And you know, and they old, so what they are not gonna be doing is throwing chairs and bashing this shit. They're gonna be talking. Well, talking hopefully, they don't do that on the regular Bachelor. I hope they not. They so they on the Golden Bachelor. The one thing that is like kind of a double edged sword for me is that these women are my mama age still crying over dudes which is kind of disheartening but also the fact that like people are out there trying still trying at their age is like gary is a widower um and he's just a really sweet man and i cry every time he cries so like every episode me and gary crying and the women are like they found some like hottie hotties like they didn't do the traditional 73 year old lady route so they had to you know, sprinkle in some sex appeal because Gary, Gary, fine. Like he's yeah. a nice looking older gentleman. Uh, everybody so it'll be... so fine. I see. Yeah. I see the, uh, man, have y'all seen the Stephen A. Smith clip of him looking at the Bachelor? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, <I'm not> <laughs> hold on, hold on. <laughs> we'll pick up, but uh, yes, I got to see this. Yeah. Oh my God, y'all have to fucking see this shit. My girl oh. Janisha sent this to me, and I fucking <laughs> died. <laughs> I, like he low key could do the recap of it and see this is the thing. This is the thing about the the Stephen A. Smith experience. It's so much better when he's not talking about anything important. Yeah, uh, <laughs> a lot already. Oh, no. is, here we go. Here we, we go. You care about it fucks it fucks you up, but when he's talking about something <laughs> not on your purview, you be like, okay, yeah, I can. I see what you're saying. Yeah, no <laughs> thanks to Stangin. All right, here he go. Uh, now, what the hell would Stephen A. be talking about the Golden Bachelor for? Few of the young women who work on this show tried to convince me to watch the damn Golden Bachelor. So I actually watched <laughs> it for a few minutes, right? It debuted on ABC. This is what he said. I'd he love it handsome. if I found a partner who was high energy, that they enjoy sports. Someone that maybe plays pickleball. Someone that maybe plays golf. And I'm sitting there going like this. This is a younger generation. It's linear television. And I know that audience is usually older, 50 and older. But everybody's watching, streaming is elevating every day. More and more that younger crowd, blah, 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 blah. I said, come on now. Who's going to watch this? Who's going to watch this? I'll be damned. <laughs> the Golden Bachelor has 4.36 million viewers. That was watching that show. 45% from the most recent premiere of The Bachelor. Mm -hmm. The Golden Bachelor got more viewers than The Bachelor. Showed you a lot of old people out there. He's 72 years old from Indiana. He was actually encouraged to apply to be The Bachelor by his two daughters. Their name is Angie and Jenny, according to my research. Shout out to Angie and Jenny. The debut of The Golden Bachelor stands as the most watched 
and highest rated program across Thursday night programming, even beating the People's Choice Country Awards. I got that. I mean, damn. <laughs> damn. 72 years old. <laughs> and got 4.36 million viewers. I, 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 I'm, I don't know what to say. I, I really don't know what to say. And look at these women. Sandra. Sandra, retired executive assistant. Look at Peggy, 69. Sandra was 72. They don't look their age Look at these all. women. Look at Nancy. Look at Nancy. I mean, uh, oh, damn. Look at Marina. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> look at these candidates. Look at Les. Go ahead, Les. Fitness instructor. Go, let, 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 you go, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Private school administrator. Look at Natasha. <laughs> Come on, girl, Natasha. Oh, no, no, no. Go back to Natasha. Let's go back to <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> 60. Ladies and gentlemen, we got 30 year olds out here ain't looking like that. <laughs> <laughs> we got 30 year olds out here ain't looking like that. And let me tell you something right now. We should be supportive of this. You know why? Because Father Time and Mother Nature creeping up on all of us. Right. On everybody. We ain't getting no younger. This ain't Mork and Mindy from the 70s or 80s. <laughs> when he got younger as, he, as, as time went by. No, we get older. That 72-year-old man from Indiana whose two daughters stepped up and be like, Dad, Dad, Dad. They basically saying, Dad, you fly. Now, I can assure you, my daughters wouldn't do that for me. <laughs> They'd be like, look, Dad, you, you're not all that. They, they'd be the first to say, you ain't all that. Oh, God. People come up to me. Women walk up to me on the street. Oh, like, oh this, these are my daughters. They like, they like Shanene in, in the show Martin. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what do they want from you? I mean, please. <laughs> yeah. That's my daughters. But Angie and they looking out for Pops. Like they're like, you, you, you got it going on, Pops. Go ahead. Could you imagine how they feel about him now? Four million viewers. Four million viewers. This, this is amazing. Oh, man. This is his lane. I'll like, like you. I'm not trying to find, like, this right here is his lane. Y'all, that's why I'll be watching that shit. That's, it's, 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 it's that. It's not the sports. I don't give a fuck about the sports. That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> he just be acting I stupid. can see him do a recap back <laughs> every week. I tune in for that shit. He's like, go back to Natasha. <laughs> 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 Hey, we got 30. Ladies and gentlemen, we got 30 years old. <laughs> <Don't look like laughs> oh, man. Yeah, let him That's let him great. be on the closing thing they do. The like the Yeah, live. the the fucking the, the they do like three live events. The yeah. the women tell all the after the final rows. Let Stephen A do that. Yeah. But like he, if they smart, then people will reach out to him. He, like, def he definitely watched every episode. You know mm -hmm. he did. He he watches he's now. what mid fifties, right? Yeah, and he he like Natasha only five years older than him. I hope right. he slid in her DMs. Yeah, right. he got he had his eye on Natasha. He want he want all the ones that didn't make. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all right, but back to the very serious guest of race. <laughs> uh, uh, we got derailed for a split second. Yeah, we got a little derailed. We got a little derailed, but we're back. We're back. Um, a man was caught in the act. With a stuffed animal. Oh no! What if they do with the stuffed animal? The, I mean, the it's... act, Karen. It's only one. The act in the. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I understand that. I mean, but it's a stuffed animal. I mean, he so... was stuffing it. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Um, so uh, apparently, an Arkansas cop last Sunday morning spotted a suspicious car parked outside a commercial storage facility that had been broken into sixteen times this year. 16 and 36 times in 2022. A sheriff is that his ex wife's or something? What is happening here? Something I don't know. About They're not saying he broke into it, just that oh. it had been broken into. A sheriff's deputy noted that the vehicle in question was seen rocking at 12 45 a.m. <laughs> not the rocking, uh, don't come a knocking. Don't come a knocking. <laughs> when the cops looked inside the auto, Theodore Morgavin, 55, was having sex with a stuffed animal. Morgan, a divorced father of three, lives about a mile away. So he drove there to fuck the animal? 
What did you fucking to put it back? What? He don't. Anyway. I mean, I mean, just steal it and take it with you, with damn, damn. I don't even know that it was stolen. We we assuming he stole. It. He could have just been having sex with his stuff there. I don't know. Uh, but oh, since, he, he he just like to do it in public. I get you. I get you. Since he's on probation, that, that, cops were able to search him and his car without needing a warrant. Uh, and they found methamphetamine, a syringe, and two marijuana pipes. He okay. was charged with felony drug possession, misdemeanor counts of public sexual indecency, and possession of drug paraphernalia. At his arraignment today, he's free on $5,000 bond. He entered a not guilty plea. Uh, he's next due in court October 30th. He was convicted earlier this year on narcotics and theft charges and placed on probation for two years and fined $1,690. Um, <clears throat> so further details about the stuffed animal do not appear in the court record because, you know, you got to keep the... You got to protect the victim. Mm-hmm. Uh, Karen, guess the race of Mr. Mm, Theodore Mor- Morgavan. White. All right. Nick Jew. Uh yeah, he I I would like to know where he was on January 6th for <laughs> sure. That's a for good sure. a question. The chat room says, Hey, I'm Chris Hansen. Why don't you come over here and have a seat? <laughs> Nothing animals leads to drugs, white. Build a cracker. <laughs> Build a bear workshop white. Every Hilarious. good white man story starts with white catnip meth. White catnip. <laughs> <laughs> uh, white like that stuffing. The correct Ooh. answer is white. You all got it correct. Good job. Oh yeah, he did it. He definitely did that. Uh, what's even funny oh. is, is that red line across the I'm on it now. That is fucking hilarious. I don't know why that's killing me right now. It's so good. That was like, we got to protect the victim. All right, well, y'all are both two for two so far. Oh. So it's time to go to the third round where everything's worth triple the racism and triple the points. It's not the bitch was why. I ain't racist. How can I be racist about anybody or anything in my life? How can I? Call them niggas. Just call them niggas. Andrew wanted to make a splash uh, at this year's polar block. Oh, she oh. did. The yeah, best thing about that um Sharon Osbourne clip that is so underrated to me is how mm-hmm. she starts it with a little black scent. I ain't racist. I ain't racist. <laughs> How can I? Yeah, she was doing a lot. She was doing a lot in that clip. I love that clip, by the way. Yes. A shout out to the morning show. Uh, yes. Yes. Shout out to the morning show for, for giving us our racism episode. Um, ripped from the headlines. <laughs> <laughs> a former Girl Scout troop treasurer has been arrested and charged with felony theft after allegedly stealing over $12,000 from the troop during her time at the helm. God damn, damn. stealing all the Girl Scout cookies for they ain't going on no field trips. Nobody know why. We ain't got no funds. We can't go nowhere. But we we sold all the cookies. <laughs> Just confusing the poor kids. The kids <laughs> doing their math. And they was like, well, by our calculations, we don't raise, you know, $5,000. This is enough to go to the, the Camp Wakamaka. And she's like, nope, we ain't got it, baby. Well, you can't go this year. <laughs> don't know what's happening to poor kids. Camp Wakamaka. You know they be having all them crazy names that they be making up with them kids to be going, going to. You can't pronounce. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, <laughs> at least it don't make sense to me when they apply for that uh when they do that thing where it's like if you sell this much you can get a bike or whatever it's like yes. i'm sorry baby but they out of bikes this year they again no bikes they out of bikes again yeah they was out of bikes last year she taped she taping new numbers to the thing no you got to sell twelve thousand cookies no <laughs> but the baby's really like the math ain't mapping why the numbers going down <laughs> We already hit 600. How we back down to four? All the other troops got all the other troops got day bikes. Yeah, they they that's why they out. Um, <laughs> the Delaware State Police announced they arrested 52-year-old Kelly M. Robb of Frankfort, Delaware, last Thursday after a 10-month investigation 
into Jesus. how the money was disappearing from the Girl Scout troop. Okay, I need to know who's the 21 Jump Street that got that went under right. this information. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, what is a 10 month investigation, dog? What did they had a set up a wire? It was like how y'all got Gotti. <laughs> 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 Uh, on January 31st, 2023, at approximately 3.14 p.m., the Delaware State Police Financial Crimes Unit met with the local Girl Scout troop representatives regarding a theft. Kelly Rod was identified as the former treasurer of the Girl Scout troop, they said in a statement announcing her arrest. Following a 10-month investigation, troopers discovered she issued in cash fraudulent checks in addition to making an oh. unauthorized payment card transactions during her time as treasurer with the Girl Scouts from January 2018 to November 2022. Mm. Mm. All, all in with the Girl Scout money is just so fucked up. Ain't it though? You try to teach the kids Damn. people, and all you try to teach them is to be scammers. She got her scammer badge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the total, the total loss over that fifty-eight month period amounted to more than twelve thousand dollars. She turned herself in to authorities last Thursday and subsequently was charged with theft over $1,500, a felony in Delaware. Ooh. It was arraigned by Justice of the Peace Court, too, before being released on her own recognizance. No trial date has been set yet. Wow. Wow. What are you in for? You know? Um, all right. Guess the race, Karen. Oh, white. All right. Nick Jew. This is complicated because, like... Typically, Delaware is not known to be a place with a lot of black people, but there are black people in Delaware. It's like a whole HBCU in Delaware. Um, mm -hmm. I hate to say it, but these are some very black crimes. Uh, however, we learn from the best. So this is definitely some like white sash crime. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she's she's white. <laughs> yeah, and I know it says I'm sharing my screen, but y'all can't see it, right? No, okay, no. Yeah. I don't know why I did that. But anyway, the correct answer is... Oh, wait. Chat room. Let me see what y'all said. Join the scammer Black. We know it's not Tasha K because she ain't got no money. White. <laughs> oh, no. That was a lot of police resources. Black. Girl scam cookies. White. Tree falls. White. Uh, Troop Delaware. White. Still in Thin Mints. White. Okay. So Karen went white. Nick, do you went white as well, right? The correct yeah. answer is white. You both got it right. <laughs> I don't think, uh, and I think a couple people missed it. I think a couple people did say black on this one, so let me boo y'all. When I think about somebody stealing from children, mm -hmm. she did that. This the face I see. She's giving me uh, misery vibes. Y'all mm -hmm, remember that? Mm -hmm. With Kathy, Kathy Bates. Yeah, that's one of my. Fa I don't care. She will yeah. always be that woman to me. Kathy Bates killed that role. Yes, she did that shit. Out of all her roles I've ever seen her in, like yes. I guess because I seen her as a child, that shit, that shit made an imprint on my ass. Honestly, that movie, oh my god, that movie was really so fortuitous. It was telling us about staying culture and staying culture all together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was telling us every like a it long was a time book. ago. Yeah, she read the book and just got fucking obsessed. Right, she didn't like that that ending. She was like, you mm -hmm. pussy head. That's how people sound to me when they be online, like harassing people and calling them names. Like, right. I remember in an interview, Issa said the the one thing she regretted was naming the character after herself because people would be like coming for her whole throat talking about this TV show. Yep. All right, last thing, everybody, it's time for sword ratchetness. <laughs> This is always intense, and one day I hope they're gonna make it. I know they never do. Don't ask me why. Uh, Denton woman arrested after five firearms and a sword were taken from unoccupied house. Five firearms. A 42 year old woman was arrested on a felony or uh, warrant Monday after detectives linked her home to a burglary where five firearms were stolen. Um, they took the original burglary report June 2nd. The caller told police she was cleaning out her mother's home, uh, trying to sell it. The home had been unoccupied for some time as her mother was living elsewhere. 
And when she arrived at the home, she found the door to the garage was left open. She said she walked in to find the house ransacked. She reported two rifles, two handguns, a shotgun, a Revolutionary War era sword, and about a hundred dollars in coins were missing. God damn, the whole 1776. She went back in the day. We're gonna find some doubloons. What's happening in this house? <laughs> Uh, after the report, detectives received information that the 42-year-old woman had shown someone firearms she was trying to sell. The report states those firearms match the description of the stolen ones. So that person maybe was casing the joint then. Um, so detectives executed a search warrant on the woman's home on the 1,000th block of Panhandle Street. Um, that is an interesting name for a street. I, <laughs> yes, yeah, it is. I feel like people would not want to live on Panhandle Street. Mm -mm. Maybe that's the reason they named it that. Just try to scare them away. I don't know. Her home is known to officers as she and other residents there have lengthy criminal history that includes several felony indictments and convictions. Most recently, another resident, a 24-year-old man, was arrested for allegedly stealing his neighbor's truck and shotgun. Well, God damn! Stealing a lot of guns around there. What's the right. guns for? Right. It's yes. definitely not protecting your property because they're getting stolen. Like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, during the search, detectives recovered the Revolutionary War era sword that was missing from the house. Well, that's an open and shut case because ain't two of them sitting around. Mm -mm, that's an antique. The woman was present at the time of the search. However, detectives had not yet been granted a warrant for her arrest. The report states that she did not know anything about the firearms and alleged mm -hmm. someone else had gotten them from a dumpster. We don't believe you. You mm -hmm. got that in Paul Revere's outfit. Get out of here. No, everybody going. Everybody <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> she, so she got, uh, she did get, eventually get arrested August 18th uh, for burglary of a habitation. It's a second degree felony. They returned to her home, to the, her home in Panhandle Street on Monday and arrested her without incident. Um, so there you guys go. Um, that that's that's the sore ratchetness. Nicole, it is always a pleasure seeing your face Yay, and talking to you. We love you. I love like, you too. Thank you so much for having me on. I heard Ray Sonny on, and I was like, Can I be on the show too? I want to come on the show. You know, y'all can drop by anytime. Anytime. Man. You we, we we love y'all. Yeah. I love chopping it up with y'all. Yeah. You and the globe hopping Reggie. Let us know. Yeah. And we, we'll be more than happy. Yeah, we uh, hopefully maybe might be more regular coming here. So I don't want to speak too soon, but I do believe that my famous globe trotting friend might be living in one place, but not like right right now. Maybe like beginning right. of the year. But if you do want to hear me do something weekly, I do a podcast with some of my friends from the stage Crunchy and Milk podcast, which you should also be listening to. That's Crunchy spelled with a K. We have an offshoot podcast where we review the Great British Bake Off. It's called Crim Patissier, the Crim spelled with a K. Um, everywhere where you can get podcasts, and we put that out every week. There you go. And and I, I love what's the tea. I love hearing y'all talk. It feels still like you know, just I'm bugging. I'm on a phone call tapping y'all. <laughs> the FBI. Yes, yes. It <laughs> It's just hilarious just to sit down and, you know, listen to you two. You know, it was a running joke that y'all were like bi-weekly. And then y'all was like, well, now we really is, you know, bi-weekly. Right. right. Once a, we, we promise you at least once a month. Anything of a side thing? Never, it's whenever, a bonus. I'm here for it. Whenever it hits the feed, I always start smiling and, and whatnot. And then just... In general, you know, Nick, you're on my, my short list of people that I, I'll be tapping in with, you know, uh, checking on my strong friends, I guess, as they say. I don't know how that yeah. works, but <laughs> I, I, didn't, I, don't, I don't rank my strength of my friends. I'll be real with y'all. I just text. Yes, I have a handful of these. life. You might need my life. Yeah. Okay. okay. I, I love y'all so much. Happy in with So, um, and Honestly, you had the best, uh, give the best, like, that's a whack person advice. I'll never forget that. <laughs> never. <laughs> had that to go down an all time history. She called it early she when I couldn't. She. Yeah, okay. Nick G was like, so, and I appreciate I appreciate you, Rod, too, because I have a tendency to be like, fuck them. Don't do that shit. Fuck them. They whack. Um, and you like are very level headed. It's the Libra in you. And I'm glad that you like <laughs> see through sometimes because I, some, my gut reaction to people, I'm like, fuck them. Fuck them. I feel like um, we've been we yeah, balance. I think we do. I think we you do. Know, and if we agree, God help you, dog. If right. we agree, it's over. <laughs> like, you, you really ain't shit. <laughs> if, if 
we look like, yeah, yeah, I can't think of nothing either. Yeah, yeah. If, if y'all all want to quote it, it was hilarious because Roger always keep to himself, and Nick, you was like, you gonna be my friend. I don't know, I don't know why you try, you trying to just fake how it. I am. <laughs> Unfortunately, I be snatching people up. Like, sorry, you're you're mine. I don't. Know. And, and Karen, like, I feel like we talk all the time, but we don't. We just listen to each other's podcasts. Yes. I think we would be yeah. dangerous on the phone regularly, like just hours and hours <laughs> and hours of talking. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? And, and the thing is, I'm like, I'm like, I'm to the point with you. I want a few people where if something was to happen, I would be like, you know what? Let me get the next plane and let me go see what's happening. I have very few Appreciate people. I would like stop everything that I'm doing and be like, oh, my friend is in distress. Fuck everything else happening in my life. Let me get some PTO time or whatever I got to do. Or y'all, I'll holler at y'all when y'all get back. You well, know me. Somebody messing with Karen. Mm-mm, nope, 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 nope. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, and also you one of the few people that it was almost like a love at first sight. I know that might sound wild. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Like it was, it was literally like that. I was like, oh, she gonna be my friend. Like, like, like when I first said, I was like, oh, we th- uh, this gonna be my dog. I was like, I don't know if she know it or not, but this right. is how I feel. No, y'all don't. Listening audience, I don't care if you think you know Karen or you've met her or whatever, but like when Karen, Karen will look at you with them eyes and just ah! implant herself onto your heart. And the way she just looks at you like you possibly might be magical. I'm like, oh, I I love her <laughs> forever. <laughs> forever. I, I love all of y'all. I love both of y'all. And We'll be back uh, throughout the week. Thanks for listening. Uh, final Walking Dead recap is coming up Wednesday. So Ooh. be looking forward to that. We're looking forward to that. Then after that, the rest of y'all can come on back. We know the rest of y'all was like, <laughs> we know, we know Walking Dead It's already ended. Y'all can come on back. But for the 12 of us, let's go. Uh, so uh, until then, I love you. I love you too. Mwah. Mwah. Bye, everybody. Bye, Nicole. Bye, Nicole. Bye. Thank you. Anytime. Thank you. Anytime.